Welcome to Fire Breathing Kittens, a 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons podcast. I'm your Dungeon Master, and today we are joined by Pidge. Hello, I am a Nuzlocke Challenge character. I can only take Transfiguration spells, and if I die, I'm dead for good. A monist. Howdy, I am a Wood Elf fighter. I have Basilisk armor and Twin Swords strapped to my back. And Emiri. Hi, everybody. I'm Amiri. I am a Celestial Warlock. I wear a olive green hooded scarf to cover up two cat ears atop my head. And last but not least, Tin Man. Hello. I am a Warforged Artificer. I wear heavy armor, an unloaded crossbow at my back. I also have a metallic dog and a drone following me around. <laughs> And we're all level eight. I forgot. Sorry. <laughs> you are all in the Fire Breathing Kittens Guild Hall. The guild is a large building with a bar, a sitting area with wooden tables and chairs, and a wall with a cork board and job flyers posted. And it's a pretty busy hopping day in the tavern section of the guild hall today. Uh, seems everybody's in good spirits. There's uh, all the tables are full. Everybody's ordering drinks. It's a good day. Non-alcoholic drinks, hopefully. Only for you. All different kinds. <laughs> My character is just sitting there enjoying the atmosphere because he's not built for consuming liquids. <laughs> My character's near Tin Man, and I'm looking at that thing that's hovering over your head, and I'm like, but it's not using the levitate spell. What? My character points at the little propellers keeping it airborne. What are these things? Whoa. Monus they are similar it. to wings. <laughs> the drone buzzes out, uh, buzzes off uh, away from your finger. Do not mess with it, please. Mona slowly reaches for the arrow on his. <laughs> <laughs> I need all of you to give me a wisdom saving throw. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, let's Ooh, see. nice roll. Oh, that was... I rolled a four, so I'm going to go with my passive, which... What was my passive? Is it 12? I rolled 12? my passive as well, so... <laughs> exactly. it's, a, it's a saving throw, so there's no passive saving throw. throw. Oh, it's not, perce it's not perception. No. Gotcha. I rolled a nine. Oh, I rolled a four, so... Uh. I rolled a 17 plus two, 19. Oh, good. I'm glad one of us lives. <laughs> Ten for me. <laughs> Alrighty. Actually, it's that's that's still not quite enough for Amiri. So you guys are talking and enjoying each other's company, messing with the floating drone, and then suddenly all the sounds around you stop. It's dead quiet. You look around. Everyone's gone. You guys are still there. You're still in the guild hall, it looks like. What do you do? Like everyone just disappeared from the other tables. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And it's it's dead quiet. Is the color around us still the same? Like we're not in, in the ethereal plane. S still looks the same. I'm just gonna cast detect magic. You go blind for a second. This is definitely all the magic. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, there's uh, something going on here, guys. Yes. Either they were taken away or we were. Can I look out the window? Sure. I do so. Okay. You look out the window. There's nothing out there. It's just blackness. <gasps> I pinch ominous to make sure we're not dreaming. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> From behind you, you hear someone clear their throat. And standing, okay. standing by the fireplace is a tall young man. With shaggy black hair, he's wearing burgundy breeches and a, a gold blouse with a, a vest, and uh, is very recognizable to Amiri. Is his name Loki? No. Well, it's a uh, pleasure seeing you again. I haven't seen you since the carnival, right? Wait. Well, looks like you guys are uh, free today. Uh, nice to see you again, ma'am. Uh, 
Allow me to properly and formally and finally introduce myself to you. Uh, I go by many names, and he steps away from the fireplace a little bit. And as he does so, kind of takes a hand out of a pocket, and he's got a stack of tarot cards that he starts kind of shuffling between his hands. Uh, And then he puts them in another pocket and bows. Uh, You can call me Raynard. Okay. Hello. Well, it's good to finally have a name to the face. You don't have any banishment scrolls again or anything? What's going on here? So he he says, uh, well, here, let's let's sit down. We need to have a bit of a chat, I think. Things have gotten a little uh, skewed and out of control. I have a question. Yes. Is the higher than top shelf... Topper than toppity top top alcohol still behind the bar? <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, no. I hop over the bar. I'm like three and a half feet tall, so it's a big hop. And I grab that bottle and I set it on the table that we all sit down at and pour us all a drink. <laughs> Except for Amiri. <laughs> yeah, Amiri's going to push it away. You can have ice water. You, yeah. Ice water. The water. orb doesn't oh. touch any of it either because, as I said, he's not built to. Consume beverages, so. <laughs> well then, a monist, would you like? Sure, just one though. <laughs> I feel I feel like we need to keep our wits about us right now. When we're in the end of the world, might as well, right? So. I'm not intending for this to be the end of the world. <laughs> is this location we are sitting? Oh, I mean, this looks like the guild hall, but it looks like the guild has been pulled into an extra dimensional rift. That's what I'm going with. Guild Hall were pulled into an extra dimensional rift. Where'd the others go? Mm, they were left behind. What kind of person is Reynard? Does he want some? Oh, he, he accepts the beverage. All right. Yeah. And he explains that this is more a dreamscape. He has summoned your consciousnesses here to discuss, uh, as this is the um, safest way for him to communicate with you. He has been trying to assist. (laughs) This is a first for me. I have never dreamed before. Hmm. Interesting. (laughs) So So, I take it this has to do with Loki? Yes, it does. I um, I have to say it was amusing to help him in the beginning. However, his machinations have uh, exceeded my normal penchant for some lighthearted fun. And also, he has caught on to my, uh, we'll say, playful endeavors to interfere with some of his more dangerous plans. Ah, you're in trouble now, huh? I slide you a glass. Yeah. He takes it. and. So how can we help? Well, uh, there's... Really only one way to deal with a god like Loki once you've gained his attention, which this guild certainly has. Uh, He cannot be defeated, but he can be sent back beyond the divine divide. So you're going to need to acquire something from his... Each pantheon has their own set of rules and items that they're tied to. There is an item that can be used to send him back. And I will happily part with this information as it is beneficial to me to no longer have to deal with him myself. And it is called uh, the Helm of Awe. A-W-E. Okay. It's been broken. (laughs) I was picturing kittens. (laughs) Yeah. Aww. Tell me about this Helm of Awe. As the DM, I would attempt to say the actual Norse name of this item, but it, it I would butcher it so bad. Ah, you're. But I will spell we it won't for judge you. you. Yeah, sure. Uh, all right, well, okay, I will try. It's the Aegis High Ulmer. Aegis High Ulmer? Yeah, it's got the, the AE that's stuck together. Yep. G-I-S-H-G-I-S-H-J-A with a foot over top, 
and then L M R. H J A L M R. Yeah, you did great. That sounds the like helm it. of awe, or or just the helm of awe. So you will need to find the the p- two pieces of the helm of awe, and then figure out how to get him to put it on. He has Gotta to wear trick it. that trickster. I like it. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Can you give us any more information about what it does? For example, if one of us were to put it on as part of tricking him, would it do anything bad to us? Um, and do you know anything about where the pieces are? Uh, I'm not sure what would happen if a mortal put it on. Uh, I can do some research into that, or perhaps you have the ability to acquire information. As I said, I'm having to uh, lay lay low at the moment. Got it. We can research. We could have Pitch but, try it on. That was mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's the Nuzlocke character. Why oh, come on. We could also use uh, Detect Magic. Uh, but I, I I do know the location ah. of the centerpiece of the helm. It's a, about a two-inch uh, golden disc. And it's got <laughs> kind of a plus sign symbol on it with lines on each branch of the little plus sign. Okay. So- uh, and it is located... In the heart of the maker who resides in a temple of Arathis on the plain of Mechanus. Temple of Arathis? Mm-hmm. In the plain of what? Is this like a... Mechanus? Mechanus. Is this like a fifth element? Sort of we kill the person and cut them open to get the, the magic item? Because I don't know if I'm down with that. And... <laughs> uh... Hmm. We've got to figure out how to get into a person's heart without stopping it. We could also oh. ask them nicely. They might yield it up. In, or- in order to banish Loki, they might yield it up if we ask them nicely. DM, is this the symbol that you were talking about that was on the hill, the centerpiece? Hold on. I don't, I'm not seeing a shared screen, so let me... Yeah. Okay, never mind. I, I, I tried sharing my screen, but... I mean, I imagine we'll we'll know it when we see it. Yeah. And then, I mean, so it's a centerpiece, and then there's also an actual helm, like a circlet or something? Yes, but... Uh, but we don't know where the other piece is. Correct. Circlet unknown. Okay, so we gotta do some research on this. Uh, the he, he, he does warn you that the maker is a powerful construct that has gone mad. Oh. It, um, how... It was a, a artificer fused their soul with a construct. Oh, I'm impressed. Another artificer decided to give up their <laughs> yeah. fleshy body. Yep. And then started going by the maker. Oh, hey, Tin Man, can I ask you a question about how hard it is to get your heart out without killing you? Can we do that? or To me? Yeah, to a to an artificer who has fused their soul with a construct. I would not know. I was born this way. Hmm. So it's possible we could do this without killing. Or like them. made this way, technically not born, but you get the point. <laughs> yeah, I could try to spare the dying him. Baby, you were born that way. Well, he has gone mad. Well, I mean, also depending on the size, if he's especially large, could you use <laughs> dimension door to port yourself inside of the body? If he's like a clockwork? How oh, large sure. exactly are we talking about? Uh, I guess we'll figure it out when we get there. It's a, a puzzle. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Ra- Raynard, Raynard doesn't have all the details. Yeah. Or if he does, we'll need to figure it out when we get shit. there. This should be interesting. I've not run into many of my kind, especially another construct. Or I wonder if he's only partially big, maybe if Pidge could blink inside of him. Cause we'll figure it out when we get there. You'll be able to see inside of him if you blink. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Okay. All right. All right. Is there anything else that you could tell us, Raynard? Anything else we should know? The temple itself, uh, some magics might not work mm. the way they're intended. Um, 
Oh. Okay. And good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Do you do you accept this uh, mission? And Mary, what do you think? This I know this is very. You're the one who knows more about this topic than any of us. Do you think we're we're up to this? Oh, we have to. There's no other choice. We got to get rid of Loki. And Ray Raynard's kind of hasn't let us down before. He's the one that gave us that scroll to banish the uh, creature mm -hmm. in that one village. So I have no think reason gonna, not to trust him. Do you think we're going to get to meet Thor? Because that'd be really cool. <laughs> you guys might also remember that when you were guarding Dolly Porton, you all received a tarot card with a moon on it. That was true. You later figured out that someone was trying to warn you that there was deceit and danger afoot. Oh, yeah. I remember. I'm still sad. I miss my flowers. <laughs> Those poor flowers. <laughs> All right. Can you take us to this uh, dimension so we could not have to find our own way there? To this dimension? This is but to, by the lady's the... blessing, it would be my pleasure. And he bows and he snaps. And you blink out of the fake tavern and find yourselves standing in front of a large metal cathedral. And looking out behind you, you can see that you are floating. You're on a, a floating gear, just a massive floating gear in an in endless sky. You can look down over the edge and it just goes on and on and on forever and there's very pretty trees around this great big cathedral there's a nice little garden and a walkway oh it's so pretty did mm -hmm. did we just get teleported to the the temple of arathing arathus yep arathus yep. oh that okay that just made that very easy okay <laughs> <laughs> You're what right is the there. temple of Arathis? You could do a religion check. <laughs> okay, not, so that's based, not me. <laughs> that's based on knowledge for my character. I know. I, I was planning on on going to a library before this, but okay. <laughs> I'll do a religion check. <laughs> that's an ugly 20 total. All right. 16. Let me just uh, give you the official. So Arathis is the god of of inspiration and invention. Oh! <laughs> uh, typically um, presented as female. Interesting. Let's see, what else can I tell you about Arathis? Yeah. Yeah, knowledge, knowledge, invention, civilization. Symbol is the upper half of a clockwork gear. So you see that emblazoned on the front of the cathedral. And the cathedral itself, there's a big arched doorway in the front with two small towers to either side. And then one very tall tower on the back side of it that rises probably 300, 400 feet into the air. All of the windows uh, are 40 feet off the ground and have been shuttered. Hmm. From the inside or the outside? It looks like from the outside. As you're standing there, and you're kind of just taking in what's going on, you can see sh shapes, uh, figures flying to the tops of the two smaller towers on the front of the cathedral. And they seem to be zooming back and forth between those two towers, and periodically one flies up to the big tower in the back and then back to the smaller towers hmm. are the figures and... riding anything no hmm. and right now you're about 200 feet from the cathedral kind of like right on the edge of this great big uh floating gear island is there any texture at all to the outside of this cathedral is there any like rough stone is there any plant life vines anything like that the structure itself is made out of smooth metal, from mm -hmm. what you can tell from this far away. Mm -hmm. um, there are some plants growing close to it, but you don't know if there's any growing on it. Is there you a said door? There's trees. 
There's trees. Yeah. Is there a door? Okay. From from what you can tell from this far away, there appears to be. There's definitely a doorway. It's kind of shadowed. Making sure that the flying wasn't the only way you had to get into this place or something. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> if, the, if there are trees that go that grow close to it, I could climb one of the trees up towards one of those windows and open a shutter. I do have Mask of the Wild, so I should be able to conceal myself from those sentry drones. Well, we don't um, know that those are sentry uh, drones or not. Those, we don't know what those are. I'm assuming. You can't really see through a shuttered window, though. I know, but if they're shuttered from the outside, I can open it. I can fly. You can fly. Can you? Be, will you be seen if you fly up there, though? Is there any reason for us not to knock on the door? <laughs> I would just like to know before we knock on the door what we're getting into. As, as you guys are standing there, there's a, a, a tree nearby, and a little clockwork squirrel scampers down the tree <laughs> and like digs in the ground for a second, buries something, scampers back up the tree. And you start to look around and you notice there's actually a fair amount of wild wild life around you, but it's all little clockwork bugs, clockwork birds, clockwork squirrels. Uh, okay, you just caught Tin Man's full attention. I'm going to try to catch a bu- one of these clockwork things. <laughs> Zero one, fetch. <laughs> While Tin Man is doing that... Um... If you're not going to be detected, Amonis, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't try it. If you think you can get away with it without... Yeah, I mean, I have Mask of the you. Wild, I have great stealth, and I have advantage on stealth. So, uh Yeah, sure. Try. Go. Go ahead and do it. And <laughs> Tin Man's going to catch a bug. <laughs> yes, this is Tin Man's dream location right now. <laughs> I'll make sure he doesn't fall off the edge. Okay. I suspect Tin Man is going to have a lot more friends after this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So I rolled a four and an 18 plus six is 24. Um, so 24 for stealth to climb up this tree plus Mask of the Wild to, you know, without seeing, climb up a tree near the side of this building and see if I can you know, sneakily pop open a shutter a little bit and and peek in through a window and see what I see. Okay, so first you're going to cross the 200 feet up to the chapel? Sure. And what does Mask of the Wild give you as you're crossing open ground? Uh, as, long as, he's as long as he's close to a shadow, if he's in a natural environment, he can hide in plain sight, basically. Trees. Yeah, are there at least any kind of, like, tall grasses or anything? Yeah, there's trees around. All right. Hiding in plain sight is pretty cool. Yes, it is. So you guys watch as Amonas kind of runs along one tree line, <laughs> lays down flat, scooches along the ground to under a bush, rolls from the bush to uh, <laughs> the shadow of another tree, pauses for a moment, and then <laughs> lunges and rolls to another tree. He does this across the the lawn. It takes a couple of minutes, but it's really impressive, and you kind of can't help it's in your head but be like, swish, woof, swah, wah, making noise for him. <laughs> but you know he's being, yeah, but he himself is being very quiet, and seems to be going undetected as he approaches. All like more rolls. like Paul Blight, Paul, Paul Blart, Mall Cop. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Not with a 24. Yeah. There's a moment where your breath catches as one of the, the drones does kind of fly over generally the area that you're in, but you stay stock still. It moves on and you're able to press yourself up against the final tree before you scurry up it up to a window to check the shutters. And they appear to be welded shut. They're welded but there is just like a little, there's little slats, so you can peek through a little bit into the into the cathedral. Okay. You can see rows of pews. Uh, there, the it seems very dusty in there. Uh, there's an altar. There's not a lot. Of, there's not a lot of activity in in the cathedral main part of this temple. And uh, you do. See 
you see a little bit of movement in one corner, but it's really hard to make out what it might be. And Does it I appear that the whole cathedral is kind of one big room? Uh, this main part is definitely one big... I have the dimensions written down. Uh, it looks like it is about 40 feet wide and about 80 feet from floor to ceiling. Mm -hmm. And the whole length of the building, which you would have guesstimated from, you know, way back before you started walking up, is probably about 235 feet long, not including the big tower at the end. Wow. Okay. okay. Yeah. It is a great big. There's probably little side rooms, but it seems like this is the bulk of of the cathedral itself. Got it. So mostly one big room, some small activity in one corner, but not a ton of of um, activity. Not this was the this place is not full. Yeah. And actually as you're as you're looking around, you can see there's like piles of discarded uh, metal bits, maybe some tools, crates, uh, almost like parts of this room have been just turned into a uh, junk storage. Hmm. <laughs> hey, for once I chose the right character for the right campaign. <laughs> hmm. okay, so, okay, quick question. Does my character catch one of the clockwork creatures? What kind of clock? clock well, what, what are you trying to grab? I'm just any clockwork creature my character can get, to get his hands on. He wants to study these things. Okay. Um, so roll a dexterity check for your zero one. Uh, zero one does not succeed. <laughs> no. Those little clockwork squirrels are super fast and the birds seem to kind of avoid the area while there's a clockwork dog. <laughs> <laughs> Mechanical dog. <laughs> I like a dog the squirrels and squirrels are... and birds. Come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a dog can never catch a squirrel. Can I, um, I have a clockwork frog in my, my fanny pack. Can I take it out, wind it up, and let it hop a few ways away from us and, like, serve as bait? Sort of like an anglerfish where you've got something small and delicious. No one would fear that. And then can I wait? Like, and pounce on it. You're trying to catch a bird, I guess? Is I'm trying the... to give him assistance, the help action. Okay. By using the clockwork frog as bait. Okay. Sure. I'll allow that. But you're going to lose the clockwork frog, probably. Or it's going to need repair afterwards. That, my character okay. can do that. Yeah. yeah I, I, wouldn't think I make frogs out of clockwork. Oh, there you go. It's what I do. Oh, yeah. So you're fine. Yeah. All right, so I, I made this. I can make another. Roll it. Roll an attack for your zero one. As a attack, oh, okay. Yeah, as a as a larger clockwork bird, like a okay. a, a, a crow, a clockwork crow lands on the frog. Okay. Um. Let's see. Pull it up. I'll say with advantage because you've got the clockwork frog. <laughs> All right. And it mechanically. Ca -ca! at you that is a ugly 20 all right you've got it zero one wags his little doggy tail and pounces and chomps and the bird flutters and he <laughs> brings it back to you and it's still like flapping its wings mm. so this thing is completely mechanical correct uh, that from uh what you can tell while it's hanging out in the mouth of your dog. Yep, seems to be. Okay, I'm going to try to take this over my... Uh, to, to pick it up. Just, I want to study it. As you've got it there and it's still kind of like flapping, there's like now like clicking noises from where gears just aren't quite landing the way they should. And there's oil leaking out of this thing. There's some grinding noises. Okay. I stick it into my bag of holding. I'm going to study this thing later. If it's clockwork, it shouldn't have to breathe inside of the bag. So, uh... All right. So there's clicking and grinding and fluttery noises coming from inside of his bag. All right. Back to a monist. It's a bag of holding, so it's not going to be an issue. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. You, you just know that that's happening inside your back. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So I assume I've seen everything that I'm that I'm going to see from up here. Yeah, from this perspective. Can I reach any of the windows that seem to be um, attached to any of the towers or any of the like side rooms from any of these trees? Uh, the trees aren't quite tall enough to get you to the higher windows on the tower. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a small room off uh to the side of the church of the temple you might be able to work the shutters on one of the smaller windows that it has there's a little side door there too okay yeah i'm gonna try to sneak over to there uh 13 plus 6 is 19 yeah you're good um everybody give me a perception check real fast uh, unnatural 20. That's a 13. 18. Uh, and... do, can I use my passive? Yeah. 13. Okay. Uh, well, you and Tin Man don't notice this, which makes sense because you're <laughs> busy sneaking, and Tin Man is pleased with himself over the catch of the Clockwork Crow. But Amiri and Pidge, you notice that all of a sudden, there's none of those flying sentries. They've stopped flitting back and forth. And Amonis, just as you get to that little side room, you guys hear, and it's super loud, bells from the tower start chiming. And it's so loud that the ground kind of rumbles a little bit as they chime 11 times. 11 o'clock. Ah, it's the 11th hour. <laughs> and Mary, can you tell Amonis that the sentries stopped with your telepathy? Are you able to do that? Uh, we're we're 200 feet away. So it's an, I don't know how your telepathy works. It, it's, I, I only got 30 feet for telepathy. Oh. Anyone got message? Well, once the uh, 11th bell chimes, it's a couple of minutes or seconds, but then the sentries start up again. I see. So they stop moving when the bells ring. Hmm. Interesting. Oh. But Tin Man doesn't notice that at all. Yeah. Huh. I wish I had that feat that allowed me to shoot Eldritch Blast 200 feet. All right. Uh, what, are you trying to get his attention? All right, Amonist, you're at that, that little side room where there's right. a small shuttered window and a door. So are you trying to get a monist attention or something? Not anymore. Oh, no, I would shoot the bell. Oh, you want to shoot the bell? It sounded like a lot of bells. I would. Could always like, fly up Like a lot. The bell. Bell. My character looks at your... So you wish to shoot the bell? No. No. No, you just in- capture another bug. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I, I, can, I can provide you with the ability to shoot the bell. If- no, no, we're good. No, thank you. <laughs> So, I am over at this side room, with, and you said there's a window and a small door. Can I first look mm-hmm. in the window? Well, it's it's shuttered, but it's got, like, solid shutters. It's not the slatted kind. Oh, are these ones also welded shut? Yep. Hmm, can I try the door? Would you like to do any sort of check or investigation? I would like to investigate it first. Okay. <laughs> Uh, 14. All right, with a 14, you don't find any obvious traps, but you do find that it is locked. Interesting. Hmm. <laughs> Can, does it look sturdy? It looks fairly sturdy. I mean, you've seen some pretty beefy doors in your, your time as an adventurer. This isn't the most beefy, but... It it looks well made. It's also metal. So I'm not going to try a lot to... of wood here. I don't. I don't want to try to break the, the door. Um, I'm wondering if I can just slip the lock. I don't have lock picks tools, but I do have a very slender scimitar. I'm wondering. Hmm. <sighs> Nothing. 
Tin Man okay. has lock picking tools. Well, maybe I'll come and grab you guys. Ammonis is kind of heading his way into a one person takes on the enemy and has <laughs> one quarter the amount of strength they're supposed to, and then finds out what it's like for a character to die. Well, I'm, there's also a lot of shadows in here, so I'm wondering if I can get in, open the front door, let you guys in. That might be a nice way to, to get... I don't know. I'm thinking about it. I could dimension door inside the church, but I could only bring one person with me. Yeah, um, We haven't even get... tried the front doors, guys. <laughs> well, you're getting very Before we do that, I'm just wondering, I'm just going to take my scimitar, I'm going to try to slip the blade in by the handle and just move it upwards and... S so Tin Man, we're over here at the edge of the gear, and Ammonis is going to do his thing, and if he screams a death cry, we'll run exactly. towards him. I'm just going to see if I can open <laughs> yeah. the door before I before I abandon this and come get you guys. Yeah. So... When I do this with my simtar and try to like jimmy the lock with with the edge of this sword, does it pop open? I'm, I'm all right. So kind of, I use so kind of like of trying hand? to break into your house with your credit card kind of situation. Yeah, kind of like that. <laughs> okay. So just give me a sleight of hand. Okay. Where is sleight of hand? It's in here somewhere. There it is. Plus. Seven. Oh, I have a plus seven on these, not plus six. Um. So that is a sixteen. All right, you slide your scimitar in, and you're able to push down the. What's that part on a on a doorknob? The bolt. The, or, the no, tumbler. the latch. The tumbler. Yeah, the part that sticks into the door jam. Yeah, it works. <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah, you're able to push it in, and it <laughs> opens a little bit. Amonis, we knew him well. We'll miss him. <laughs> Can I peek inside? It's dark. I have night vision. Or dark vision. This room is piled with junk. Nope, he's learning a fun lesson. <laughs> Plus, we kind of have 200 feet between us with drones. Can... And there's uh, a little bit of, of, of movement. And you see a f feather duster just dusting away. <laughs> Interesting. All right. All right. Can, all right. I, I I am hearing the wisdom of my party. I am going <laughs> to pick up a piece of. Uh, I'm I'm gonna pluck a a leaf from the tree that I'm on and put it into the latch mechanism of the door and close the door again so that it so that it does not relock, so that it's okay. like held open, but it but it appears to be closed to any casual observer. And I am okay. going to go back and, again, using the Mask of the Wild, you know, darting between shadows and trees and bushes, rejoin my party. All right. Oh, you're back. Whoa. <laughs> hey, did anything interesting happen while I was gone? I caught a bird. Good. <laughs> anything else? Yeah, we realized that when the bell rings, the drones disappear. Oh, cool. I found a way into this place. Do you think maybe the next time that the bells ring, we all make a mad dash for it and uh, get over to this door I found? Well, this place seems to be full of mechanical creatures. I think I would probably fit they in this place. Hmm. How would you like to utilize okay. that information? Bye. <laughs> yes. I, I, I hope you don't decide to stay. We like having you. I... I don't but think I, I will stay, decision. but I, this yeah. place is interesting to me. Mechanical life. Rare. He he has a point. If he's able to walk across undetected because he's mechanical, and Ominous could get over there with his fancy rolls and everything, I could dimension door me and Pidge over there. So there are two plans on the table. One is we wait until 12... And mad dash to the door that Amonist opens. And the other is that Tin Man strolls up, Amonist parkours up, and Emery and I dimension door up. True. I don't know. I just, I, I would think that saving the spell slots, I don't know. We were warned that magic may not work as intended. He is so the dimension door option is riskier. So... Uh, personally, I vote for a monist option where I'm not being teleported, where teleportation may or may not splinch me. <laughs> can we, can we... Also, can somebody just test out like a cantrip or something just to see what happens? Oh, sure. I cast Firebolt. 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> At what? <laughs> All right. Describe what that looks like. It's just a bolt of fire out of the ground. It's a can. It's a just... yeah. So a flash of light as a bolt of fire shoots from your fingers towards the ground. Does anything odd happen? <laughs> Not with your fire bolt. <laughs> okay. Hmm. The way the DM said that makes me want to test out some spells. <laughs> yeah. I don't have a lot of spells that can be used in that kind of situation. So mo- most of my Amiri. most of my higher level spells are. Uh... So a basic offensive spell still works. Um, Pidge, do you want to try move Earth? See if a transmutation Amiri, spell still works. With your passive perception, you notice that while they're testing this, there are now three shapes flying towards you from the oh, temple. Oh, oh. temple. Great. Oh God. Hey guys. We have visitors. Oh, no. I back away from the edge that I'm standing near because I don't want to fall off in the fight. That's a good idea. All right. I'm going to... Do we want to go ahead and make a mad dash towards that door I just opened now? Is fighting inside easier than fighting outside? Well, I don't think these drones can follow us. I don't think we can open a door, right? They're flyers. Also, we get... Run! They're flyers. They have shorter... They wouldn't be able to get far... uh, (laughs) Very yeah, far yeah. away inside, so because right now I'm, we still have a Amonis lead. Amonis and I are running towards the door. Yeah, <laughs> front door dash. Amonis no, leads the way. Taped door dash. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dashing, uh, so I have seventy feet of movement as I dash. Same you know, per round as I dash towards the door. Amonis probably going with me. Yeah. Yep. It only takes us about like eighteen <sighs> seconds to get there. About a little more than that, but yeah, I would. It's, it's 200 feet away, 70 seconds, or 70 feet per, per six seconds. Yeah, yeah you're right. All right. Okay. All right, I guess I'll... All right, I, as you guys start to run, you, you hear from the uh, circular flying drones that are heading toward you, Halt! Stop! Intruders! Halt! Stop! Intruders! <laughs> no! It does not make me stop. I don't think that's ever made anyone stop. Oh, God. Okay. This ought right. to be interesting. Do we make it to the door? We, we are. We're going to roll initiative. What? You guys started, yeah, you started acting as they were coming. Like, we'll see if you make it. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> They're not going to stop flying as soon as you start running and be like, oh, wait, guys, let's see if they make it to the door. How much of a lead do we have on them? It depends on how your initiative roll goes. Okay. Um, you know, let's see. I rolled that an flash eight of light plus... and kind of, you know, caught their Ten. attention. Okay. Hey, you know what? Fifteen. Thirteen. Yeah. Fourteen. Okay. Well, Pidge, what did you get? Thirteen. Pidge is thirteen. What was the Mary? Ten. Ten man was fourteen. Oh. In. Yes. Okay. Let me draw my little diagram of where you are, where they are. <laughs> All right. So, a monist, how far can you dash and around? I can, I believe, 70 feet. Uh, yes, 70 feet. And then 10 man. 60. Pidge, she said, is that 70, 70 for you? Yeah. Yeah, I have a transmitter stone that gives me 10 feet. And Amiri. 70. Oh, see, so you guys are doing pretty good. If I trusted magic here, I would use Expeditious Retreat, but I'm afraid it might turn me into a bunny or something, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is an interesting place to have three mages. Yeah. <laughs> It wouldn't be a big size change for a pidge. That's true. I might just be the Easter Bunny, three feet tall, <laughs> with giant wide eyes and teeth. <laughs> I saw this okay. funny cartoon recently that said how to recognize the normal bunny versus the Easter Bunny. And it was like, normal bunny, four legs, harmless, eats grass, Easter Bunny, bipedal, <laughs> possibly murderous, three feet tall. <laughs> like a, a survival guide for how to recognize the Easter Bunny if you see it. So it's a Flemish giant? Well, like 
So also good eating. But they're adorable. Yeah. Come on. You can't eat that. Yeah. Flemish giant would be the normal bunny. Yeah. Yeah. They taste really good, though. Have you ever had rabbit? Yes. yes. It's really good. I don't know if I've had rabbit. I mean, I would eat rabbit. Okay. So I've I've tried to math this out as quickly as I could based on running. So they're basically they're going to get one opportunity to throw javelins at you. What? Oh. Whoa. <laughs> Which is not too shabby if everybody is running and dashing, but them taking that opportunity means that you can make it to the door. So, let's see. A monist would be up front, but they miss you. With their javelin. They don't quite okay. hit it. You see 19. And then next up would be Pidge is the next fastest. Wizards fastest. have an AC of 11. Uh. Yes. So you get hit. You get nicked with a javelin for four points of piercing as it zips past your, your arm and ding, 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 ding into the ground beside you as you run <laughs> past. And, and then one kind of tinks off of uh, Tin Man, but it doesn't even dent your armor. But you guys make it to that door. Okay. I wrench it back open and usher everyone inside and slam it behind us again. And when you do so, you see that there's a a bolt that you can throw shut to lock it from the outside. Is it one of those bars that you slide in? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And you can kind of hear some some light pounding on the other side of this thick door. Hmm. They can't get in. That's great. Well, it's a for solid now. metal they can't door. Get in for now. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna... As you're standing there, the duster comes over and kind of dusts the tops of your heads <laughs> as it continues on around the room. May I keep it? I would like to keep it. <laughs> the duster? Uh, who doesn't want a magic duster? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. Tin Man, can I put this in your bag of holding? Sure. Okay. What happens when I do that? It it tries to scamper away when you go to grab it, but it is just a duster. Its dexterity is not uh, super high, nor is its intelligence. So you're able to kind of corner it, and it wiggles a little bit, but you you can grapple it and put it in the bag. Sweet. I'm sure Nulis has to appreciate it. So I'm going to spend a minute to use my tome to cast a ritual alarm on this door. Oh. We don't know what this was. Okay. <laughs> it may explode. <laughs> we might have something come through this door, and I would like to have an alarm if anything comes through. Okay, my character is looking around at all the metal stuff. All right. Oh, no, did my... Okay, alarm seems to be okay. It doesn't it yeah. doesn't explode in your face. So I'm gonna have it do an audible alarm if anything crosses. So that way everybody else could hear it. So Monus is also gonna look around this room and see if he can learn anything about the person who lives here. You know, what kind of person he might be. I'm getting a very All beauty right. and the beast vibe. <laughs> I'm right, getting right. a tinkerer vibe. So you can roll investigation checks as you're Rummaging around this junk room. I love investigating. 18. 23. Um, you guys are investigating a lot better than I am. Let's see. I rolled an 8. 3. Oh. Ooh. 7. Okay. P- me and Pidge are intelligence users, so we're not surprising that we have a pretty good investigation. I don't. It's a tw- 22. Okay. So in this room, you find a lot of scraps of metal, half put together uh, clockwork pieces, a lot of gears, little metal strips, cast off tools. (laughs) Uh, What kind of tools? Little little spanners and wrenches, screwdrivers, Mm. little different sizes of hammers they're all pretty banged up broken okay. bent uh, but tin man roll me a d100 okay oh tin man is 
liking this place. Four. Okay. So there's a D100 and I roll a freaking four. <laughs> well, let me just turn to the page then. I, I think I need to invest in some lock picking tools. Oh, you need lock picking tools? My character holds up a set. Do you have more than one set? No, but I can turn any set of tool, one type of tool, into another type of tool with ease. Oh. Oh. Can, can I have a set? Mm. I'll see what I can do. Okay. That would be handy. I was going to buy a set after this, but if you can just jimmy some of these into some lockpicking tools, that works for me. Uh, Monist, you might not be proficient in them. Can I build proficiency in them? I don't know how that works. I don't... You can train in it with downtime days with with some things. I don't know. We'd have to... There's rules on that. We'd have to find them. But Tin Man, I don't have the official name of this glue in front of me, but you do find a half a tube of the uh, super... It's basically super glue, but the, the stuff that you have Cyano to have... Cyanoacrylate. It's, a, it's like a magic item glue. So is it sovereign glue? Yeah, that's the stuff. Oh, excellent. I'm also filling up my bag of holding with uh, the junk metal that I find. You never know when uh, scrap might come in handy. You also find uh, about 250 gold worth of copper wiring. Whoa, copper wire. You might need that. Um... My character right. it, it casts mending on the various tools that he has that he finds to fix them up, and does that explode us? Oh, Let's double check. No, but you guys have been in here about fifteen minutes when you hear the bells chime again, but just once, one big chime. Oh, okay, they ring every fifteen minutes. Okay, interesting. All right, Pidge. Do you want to roll a d100 and see what you found? Sure. First digit, nine. Second digit, three. Ninety-three. Ooh. This one's going to be fun. Like, do the description. But what were you going to ask me about the room? Is this room a small, closed workshop with no doors to other things? With no, no doors to other areas? There's a door on the other side. This was this is like a mud room that's been filled up with junk. Okay. All right. You find a looks like a wristband, and uh, it's got a button on the side of it. There's like a little disc on the very top, and the button seems to be stuck. But you think you could probably just find a little screwdriver or something and unstick it. Here. I, I, can I, do, can I see, do I see the tool, the wristband? If, if Pidge shows it to you. Because <laughs> you're all digging. I, being a very curious person, accept the screwdriver from Tin Man and attempt to, using mending and the fact that I'm an artisan who specializes in, you know, this is my jam. So I'm going to try to use mending and then flavor-wise... I'm using the screwdriver to pop the button up and investigate. All right, you pop the button up, then you could, I assume, press it to see what happens? Or Yeah. Okay. You hear some light whirring, and then a face opens on that little disc on the top, and an image of your choosing is projected uh, in a spot that you pick within 30 feet that you can use to uh, confuse attackers or you know, whatever you might need to use an image for. Cool. This is a visual displacement device. And 430 gold worth of miscellaneous uh, metal cogs and plates that are bent up, but you know, melted metal is melted metal. So you could oh, I, cash I can't that carry in. that. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So I, but, I point that out to Tidman. If you can carry this four hundred and thirty gold worth of metal, you can have it. It goes into his bag of holding. 
Okay. That's the nice thing about I having have, a bag of holding. I have a weight limit. <laughs> yep. 430 pounds of metal. Well, gold worth of metal. I don't know how much it weighs. And, and Amonis, this all just looks like junk to you, but you do mm-hmm. find a uh, electrum ingot. Oh, that's, okay. It's worth about 30 gold. Okay, I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they don't they don't just have gold coins lying around, but there's all kinds of metal. Just gotta take it to a scrapper. You'll be fine. And then Amiri D one hundred. Oh, we may have lost Amiri. Alright. I will roll for Amiri and then we'll just tell her what she finds later. Yeah. Okay. Okie dokie. Yep. So is there still pounding on the door? No, oh, it seems to have faded in the 15 minutes or so that you guys have been quietly rummaging. Hmm. And there's a door beyond this? Mm-hmm. There's some boxes in front of it. You'll have to shift out of the way. Okay. All right, we can do that. All right, you do that. And you peer in and again... Are we see- uh... Oh, go ahead. Are we seeing the, 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 the big like main main cathedral room from here? Yes. So you look in and it's you're about midway down. You're at the halfway point in this big cathedral room. You can see the big arched ceiling. And it's, again, just a dumping grounds for failed tinkering creations, uh, scraps of metal, broken tools, a lot of that. Uh, but now that you're in here, you can see Throughout the room, there's little bits of movement. There's little rags that are polishing, little dusters that are dusting. There's even a small broom that's just really giving it to one corner, trying to get it clean. Seems I like want it's just... all of those. <laughs> <laughs> Can Are you I gonna start a maid service? We won't have to worry about keeping the uh, guild hall clean if we steal all this stuff. Yeah, I want to steal all this stuff. What can I shove into his bag of holding? <laughs> uh, my bag of holding is getting a little full right now with all that metal that we just collected. So, uh... Can I catch one rag, one broom, and one duster? Yes. Yay. The broom is a little tricky just because it's got a little more speed to it. It is just a normal broom that's been animated. So it's not going to like fly you around or anything. <laughs> but it can clean. And there's an animated duster, like dust pan that goes with it. Does it have a pointy Sweet. wizard hat? Not yet. <laughs> you could probably fashion one easily. I just want to figure out how it works so I can make more. Yeah. And the funny thing is, is the dust pan just takes dust over to another corner and dumps it out where another broom is sweeping it up and another dust pan. They don't seem to have a place to put what they're cleaning. They're just perpetually cleaning. Aw, you guys need a home and some love. And to says, be taken apart and reverse engineered. Says every old cat woman ever. I hope they're not reverse engineering their cats. Well, the last one was. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> uh. All right. So this room, just the only movement is these cleaning All implements. Cleaning. Yep. All right. So we have yet to find the maker. I suspect the maker is in that tower. Can I tell from from here which direction that tower was? Uh, yes. You, from having viewed the temple from the outside, that big tower should be towards the back of the sanctuary room, but you don't see an egress back that way. So you're not sure okay. how to get there currently. Are there are there any other doors from this area? There's the door leading outside up that's up front that's all you can just with a casual glance that's that's what you can investigate the back you may 22 all right so you're looking around the altar area and uh you can tell this place has not been properly used in hundreds of years it seems like like there's this has not been a place of worship in a very long time but there is a button on the underside of the altar that you could press. 
I just want to read out Pidge's flaw to you guys. <laughs> Which is, oh, she's no. going to press that button. <laughs> she's like uh, the curious cat. <laughs> Ready? Finger, approaching button, and press. Do it. <laughs> there is a uh, kind of kind of like LED Tron lights kind of light up the altar and then the whole uh, raised area behind the altar and then forms the outline of a door on the wall behind the altar and there's some gear sounds crunching and some dust gets displaced uh, a couple of rags scurry out of the way as a door on the back wall slides uh, Star Trek style to the left well, that's do, just do, do, extra. Do, do. Okay. <laughs> Temple of Arathis. <laughs> they... All right. Yeah, I and think my then... character probably just found his deity. <laughs> <laughs> that he's stealing from. <laughs> and and these lights go into this corridor behind, and you can see there is a spiral staircase. Pidge turns okay. back to you all as the door opens and says, Hey, guys, want to check this out? <laughs> yes. This should be interesting. And Monus goes first. <laughs> Great. I don't know how this I works. I have 11 AC. <laughs> yeah, I know how this works. What's your, what is your AC like? Uh, 11. Mine? <laughs> Mine's, mine is uh, 19. Mm-hmm. It's pretty well. Oh, hey, Amiri. So, um, Amonis grabs Amiri. He's like, hey, hey, we, we found the door on, on, the, on this back wall. It just slid open when Pidge pushed the button on the altar. In the main cathedral room. And we're about to go in it. Amonis is going first. Do you want to join us? Yeah, I'll go. I'll go. Okay, also you found some stuff in that room back there, but we're going to deal with that later. <laughs> Tin Man puts okay. away his crossbow, since it looks like we're moving into a more close range area. Pops out his blade and pulls out his shield. Okay. Okay. I follow behind Amonis as we head into the secret corridor. Ooh. Now, board, now, Tin Man has the higher uh, <laughs> AC, so... Uh, <laughs> What's yours? 20 now. Oh, well, if you'd like to lead, by all means. <laughs> Don't worry, I can. you can go ahead, too. But okay. my, char my character keep, doesn't always... When he's using the crossbow, he doesn't use his shield. When he goes close range, he pulls out the shield and increases his AC, so... <laughs> All right, so what's the marching order going up these spiral steps? We've got Amonist in the front, right? Yeah, right. I'll go behind Amonist. Yep. Then, ten man. And Mary, and Mary gonna... do you want to go in front of me? Sure. I'll go last. <laughs> and Pidge. All right, Tin Man also infuses his sword so that it's a little more useful. So. <laughs> May I please turn around and chuck my broken clockwork frog at the button to press it again? Well, it was on the underside of the lip of the altar, so that would be a tricky throw. Oh. But I'll, uh... I can mage hand it. There, there you go. go. I Boop. do so. And it... it the, the lights go swirling back down their little pathways, darkening the corridor, and the door shuts. And you're, you're now in a dark stairway. Does everybody have dark vision? <laughs> I do. Tin Man pulls down his goggles... I'm a rock gnome. Okay, we're yes. good then. Okay, so Amonis, give me a perception check as you are heading up. Okie dokie. Um, I rolled a nine. Perception. Uh, so, I, so my roll will only get me to a 12, but my passive is 13. All right, unfortunately... You do not notice as you were going up these stairs. As you step on one of the steps, a glyph lights up under your foot. Give me a dexterity saving throw. Ooh, I'm good at those. Oh, apparently not that good today. <laughs> um, <laughs> 11. All right, it explodes underneath your foot throwing you back, Boom. and you're going to take 23 oh, 
A remarkable oh. athlete. Add half proficiency bonus to strength, dexterity, and con saving throws. So 11. And also, actually... I have a flash of inspiration on him, giving him my intelligence modifier on top of what he rolls. So. Oh, thank you. How much is that? Five. Okay, so 11 to 16 plus uh, 18 is my new roll then. Okay, well then instead you're only going to take 12 points okay. of fire damage and you don't knock everyone behind you prone as you are blasted back. Okay. So you guys don't go tumbling down these steps. Yeah, that's my artificer's new ability. I can do up to five times per day. I can give a person a bonus to either a skill check or a save based off my uh, equal to my intelligence. That's okay. Cool. Can now that I am warned about these, can I proceed more cautiously, taking very close attention to the steps as we as we go up? Yes, you can. All you right. Want to check with your party members to see if they also might have some way to assist in finding glyph oh, yeah. steps. Yeah, like maybe like a detect magic, make them glow. Hmm. Hmm. And maybe so that same person would actually cure wounds you. Uh, maybe that would help too. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, that's eight plus spell cast and mod. So you get fifteen HP back. Oh, I feel so much less singed. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And uh, I should probably lead the way then. Okay. All right. So, Amiri, you're going to also cast Detect Magic? Yes. All well, right. I mean, Amiri, you also Checking fly. Every step. Do you want to, like, drift up this staircase? I could do that, too. Yeah, so, Amiri goes ahead of you guys, and, you know, every 15 or 20 steps or so points to a step. It goes, skip this one, guys, and you're able to, to make it. And it is steep. You've gone up before you reach the first. Cast light on that step too. There you go. So now it's like a it's it's kind of fun. It's a game now. <laughs> Don't step on the I'll light. Probably also help when we're coming back down. Does does Amiri periodically cast light on steps that aren't booby trapped just to make the party jump over them? Oh, of course. That that would just be fun. Because that's a harmless prank. All right, so we never you guys are amazed at how many of these steps are booby-trapped. <laughs> <laughs> and you go up about 270 steps or so before you reach the top of this spiral. And the pathway sort of loops back over what would be the attic space above the sanctuary. There's a catwalk that goes over the rooftop or the, the ceiling of the sanctuary and it curves back to the left and then heads into what appears to be an interior wall. So like this is an access an access point to do ceiling repairs as well as how you get to the upper part of the tower. I'm gonna Does the way appear clear? Check magic here. See if there's any spots to avoid. Alright. You you don't pick up any more glyphs or magical traps. On this narrow catwalk but what you do see are several uh, drones that seem to be perched in the rafters of this attic but they're currently uh, inert so I think we need to be careful not to use magic in here that seemed to set it off before I just use detect magic Uh, maybe just not anything visible maybe plus it might just not be on True. Let's pass as quickly as we can across this catwalk without upsetting these drones, guys. And let's not use magic here. Yeah, I'm just thinking that when we pass quickly underneath them, that might be enough to set them off. Is is like if you fail your self check passing underneath them quickly, that might wake them up. Yeah, should we just kill them from a distance? We could just go slow. Should we go over the roof? Like, we can go outside and fly around the building and then pick up at the other end. There are windows, right? There's active drones out there. Yeah, that's probably worse. Yeah, so that's why I'm thinking, let's try to stealth. I could also carry you, because I have advantage on stealth and an elven cloak. 
Am I more likely to be stealthy if he carries me across? DM? Um, I would say that would take away a monist's advantage. He'd just oh. be a straight roll. Okay, so let's just all walk across this catwalk. All right. Trying to be quiet. I got a a, a non natural twenty. So quiet. Good at this. Uh, stealth. Ooh. Ten. Okay. I rolled Page. a five and pitch has plus one, so I have a six, as I am apparently a very, very heavy footed thirty pound person. <laughs> and Tin Man. Forty pound person. I can't hear Tin Man. Are you muted? We can't tin hear man? you. His voice box is turned off. Oh. Yep. Just <laughs> hold up your hands with a number. Your 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 voice modulator. <laughs> Fifteen. Fifteen. He was attempting to be stealthy. He turned off his and voice modulator. Now you yeah. can restart your communication device. There we go. Skype. Restart Skype. Hopefully these things were actually off. I suspect we're rolling initiative. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, your your stomachs all sort of drop as Pidge stubs her toe and lets out a, a yip. And all kind of clench your sphincters as you're just waiting to have all of these drones descend upon you. But nothing happens. Oh, good. And and you notice as you're passing under them, they're all kind of, they're not just perched up there. They're like hung as though out of commission. They might be in storage. And you're able to pass under them. Well, that's all right. an incident. They are turned off. Okay. They are. All right, so we make it underneath this catwalk. Nothing nothing happens yep. to us. Nope. Okay. And then we make it to the bottom of the big tower, right? Yeah, so you, you make it past the catwalk and around the corner into this room. And in this room, uh, you've kind of made a almost like a square in your path to get back to the, the tower. In this room, there is a just ginormous, massive bell that's hung and um, you can see the the mechanisms that would make it ring and as you look up you can see more and more of these massive bells going up and there is a little uh, room off to the side that while there are there's ladders that go up to the bells you can see through this uh, room there's a almost looks like a piano but not quite it's got big levers and stuff on it as well as big oversized keys that one could maybe use to play the entire bell tower if they were skilled in that particular instrument okay so that room has a door in it or you can go up via ladders i'm gonna go into the room with the big piano all righty you the uh, you can see there's all kinds of pipes and cables coming off of the big piano type instrument. I see. Uh, my looks character, like it my has character. looks like it hasn't been used in a long time. And what is ringing the bells if it ha this hasn't been used in a while? Hmm. They could be automated. True. The rooms are automated. Mm -hmm. I suspect most things are here. Probably. I know this is probably pretty stupid, but my character reaches out and touches, uh, presses one of the... Whoa, hold uh, on. I was definitely not expecting that from Tin Man. Borb, maybe, but okay. I I wouldn't have been following... If this was Borb, I would have been standing right next to him to prevent such a thing, but Tin Man he took me by surprise here. My character is experimenting. All right, I need... Monist, Amiri, and Pidge to give me constitution saving throws as you are in the room with the massive bell and the t bells all above you as they all ring out when a key is struck. Fifteen. Fifteen. Alrighty. Uh, dirty twenty. Oh wait, I have... Uh, Fourteen. All right, Amonist, you're going to take six points of psychic damage. Oh. Pidge and Amiri, you're going to take three each. 
Um, and Amonis, you are deafened for a minute. Oh, <laughs> sorry. How close are we to windows? Uh, there are not proper windows up this part. I mean, you can see where there's these uh, weird slatted windows so that sound can get out, but where things like birds can't just get in. I would like to look through one and to see if any, I don't know, drones are coming towards us. And Would I have to do that at disadvantage because I got keen hearing things to my little oh. ears? I, I mean, since you brought it up, yes, that is logical. I was just thinking about that. I was like, wait, I got cat ears. That's... Oh, that's a uh, <laughs> a natural one. Okay, so you also take six points and are deafened for a minute as the ringing is overwhelms you. Uh, you can see as you're looking out, Pidge, that there's now patrol. The 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 flying drones are zipping around outside of the the tower flying upwards and yeah we'll just okay we'll just see if so the room that we were in with the organ what was the room outside of that was that the catwalk or was that something else so there was the the catwalk looped around to the room that had the big bell in it off of that room was the room with the piano organ carolyn thing which the only person that went in there was Tin Man. Everybody else, and he went in and hit a button or a key that made the. So there's the tower. You can access the tower going up via the ladders where the bells are. There's the catwalk that where you just came from, and then there's the room that Tin Man is in that has the piano, Coraline, and a door. So we don't know that it was him who pressed it. We think that the bell just rang. So I don't know to seek cover. Okay, well, right. I guess I can't hide from the incoming drones then. Uh, I just think the bell rang. Mm. Oh, God. We can't hear anybody. All right. Well, Amona sh shouts, should we proceed up the tower? Huh? You guys do remember that the bells ring every 15 minutes also. We, sh we shouldn't be in this room for sure. Let's just... Is there a room past this that's not the organ room? Um, up the tower. Just, you could check the door. The ladder? Oh. Can we There's go up the ladder and go keep going? Yeah, but the ladders run up the tower where the bells are. Like, the ladders go from bell to bell to bell to bell. So but you it doesn't would be go in... to the next area. Well, it goes up, but you would be in the cavity that houses most of the bells. You can do that. Our friends didn't enjoy that, uh, so I'm not going to do that. They're deaf. What if we stuff something in our ears before we explore the... Because I, I suspect that the master of this castle is at the like the top of this tower. At least This if... is the bell tower. There are three towers. I know, but it's the biggest tower. So something tells me that the room at the very top of this is where the master of the castle lives. At least if if all of the stories, like fairy tales I've ever seen have taught me anything, it's that whatever you're looking for in this castle is at the top of the tallest tower. So I think we got to make it through all the bell rooms if, we're, if we got to find this guy. I'm wondering if we do have to make it through the bell rooms, if we can fashion earplugs as we go through them. Do you have earplugs on you? We, I'm sure we can find bits of cloth or, I don't know, sealing wax that they would use in making contraptions or something that we can stuff in our ears. I look around the room and I do an investigation check for something that can seal a monist ears. I did a nat one. Nope. It's all, it's all metal. <laughs> all bits. Do you so, want to go through this door? Because in this yeah. room it hurts our ears. All right, you, let's go through the door. So you, you wait a minute. To be able to communicate no. with your deafened. So how are you communicating these ideas to the people I just who go through the door? Alright, as you reach for the door, a face appears on it and it goes, Oh, I wouldn't do that if I were you. That's strange. Uh I'm super trapped. It didn't do that to Tin Man. He didn't go to the door. He went he didn't into go to the... the He went into the room and he touched the piano. He did not go to the door on the other side of the piano. 
I'm so confused. So is, are we in the room with the piano? With Tin Man? It, if you have entered that room, yes. It was an open doorway. Okay, yeah. I went into the open doorway with... Wait, so I saw him press the organ? Or I didn't? No one said they went in with him originally. He said he went in, and then he pressed the button. Well, you guys were still in the corridor with the bells. I'm assuming we can... That you, when they rang, you guys ran into that room because it was less loud. And then there's a door in that room that you are now reaching towards that no one has reached. That's for not what I was trying until to do. Now. <laughs> okay, what are you trying, trying to, to do? Just trying to get away from the bells. That's all. Okay. Okay. And I'm now you- with Tin Man, and I'm probably gonna tell him not to push that button again because it hurt our friends. Hey, Tin Man, this button hurt our friends. Please don't press it again. All right, and uh, by now, uh, Amiri and Amonis, your hearing starts coming back. There's still like a ringing to it, but you can kind of hear again. Okay, so we're in this room with the piano. There's another door on the far wall. Should we try it? After I cast a tech magic on it, of course. All right. And then the, uh, the 15 minute bell rings. So you've now been in this tower for 30 minutes. Or in the temple. So, uh, detect magic on it. Yes. Yes. It is magical. It is, uh, I think, transmutation magic. I think. Right. Hey, Pidge, this is transmutation Animate magic. objects. Ew. It's not one I know. Hang on. Let me just make sure I'm giving you the right school of magic. Yes, it is transmutation. It's a higher level. Oh, it's fifth level. Ooh, that's stronger than me. Mm-hmm. I'm very curious. We'll say that that's when it it wakes up and it goes. Ooh, that tickles. Whoa. Is the wood is the metal door the thing talking or is the like handle? It, no, it's the, the, knob? It's the door, like the bolts and stuff on it, kind of come to life. The whole door. So, so like I, the whole I can't door. take this with me. Okay. Yeah, it's the entirety of the door. It's it's very expressive. We're just like raiding this whole castle. I say, oh, <laughs> in a in a good way, door. Or do you like being tickled? It's it's unusual. Can't say I've been tickled before. Do you do you want to be tickled again? Um, sure. Okay, I tickle the door because I've found a new friend. <laughs> I I touch my necklace and I do good berry once. And I say, do you eat, Dor? Do you want a berry? No, I don't eat. I wouldn't touch me, though. Don't touch me. I'm dangerous. Oh, you're dangerous. Can you tell us more about that? <laughs> I'm super cursed. Oh, no. Very dangerous. Super- you can't touch me. Oh, no. Okay, I'd like to um do a deception check. Sure. Can I insight check against their deception? Yep. A 14? Do I really think that the door is cursed? No. <laughs> you tickled it. I'm like, oh, and I continue tickling it more, and I'm like, you're not cursed. Tickle, tickle, no, tickle. No, 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 no. Oh, oh, sorry. Turn back now. Forgot I was supposed to say that. You should go away. <laughs> I have Danger. some... some... <laughs> Danger of what? Your... Doom. Ooh, the door. Oh says. no, I'm dealing with Loki. That that that's <laughs> nowhere close to the same. You feel like if it had fingers, it would be waggling them at you as it's like, get away! I will mock thee again. <laughs> I have some artisan's tools, which includes like uh, shoe working tools, pliers, leather, polishing stuff. And I'd like to polish the door and tickle it some more and, like, clean it up nicely. Because everything in here is so dusty. I want to try to make friends with this door. So I'm polishing it, tickling it. The magical duster. (laughs) So you're going to polish the door. Yeah. Get get one of the rags. Yeah, some grease here, some polishing uh, liquid or salve. All right. Give me a persuasion check with advantage. 14? I'm not very persuasive, but... 
uh, it goes, oh, you got me. I can't really do anything. I'm just supposed <laughs> to warn you off. Don't, you know. But really, though, I, you know, it's dangerous up there. Th- that part's true. Warn me off. It's so cool that you can warn me. You're such an awesome door. You're the best door I've oh, ever met. Oh, thank you. Who, it, who could have it, possibly made such a wonderful door? Oh, the maker. The maker made me. The maker made us all. This person sounds so smart. The maker is... I really look up to them. And you don't have to make a deception check. Pidge really looks up to the person who created all this stuff. Yeah. I polish the door up nice. And I stand back and I'm like, look at you all shiny. It it beams. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy being shiny. I haven't been shiny in years. Aww. Look at my handle. And it twists its handle. <laughs> Does the door open when it twists its handle? You you feel like it definitely, if if you were to pull on it, it could. It doesn't seem to have any resistance in the in the turn. Looks like a full turn. Oh, I'm ah. I'm gonna sneakily just reaches over and uh, nudges open the door while it's turning oh, its oh, handle. Oh, <laughs> oh you. Turn back! Oh, it's too late for that. I'm sorry. Uh, but really, though, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go there if I were you. Just saying. What? Why not? The the maker doesn't allow visitors. She's very dangerous. So is oh, the maker is. beyond this door? Uh, maybe. Yeah, she is. She <laughs> definitely is. You should we appreciate any information you can give us. Well, I know the maker made me, and I know the maker said, never let anybody pass. And uh, that's what I know. She's, I know she's powerful. She it's must a be a very kind person to try to keep people out if she's dangerous. If a door could shrug, it would. <laughs> Aww. It's a door. Well, it- <laughs> a door, do you, do you want anything? Because we're here. I bet we're the first person you've seen in a long time. Tell me of the outside world. All right, I'm tell me spend stories. Like <laughs> I tell it some stories it and like? some jokes. I tell it about a world beyond this gear where it's a blue and green sphere floating in the black void where lots of little people and animals hop around on the surface and I, I regale it with tales from Nick and Way. It it requests every knock knock joke that you know. <laughs> <laughs> Knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? What's a banana? Knock, knock. <laughs> who is there? <laughs> banana. Another banana? A banana who? <laughs> knock, knock. Who is there? Orange. Orange? Orange who? Orange, you glad I didn't say banana again? <laughs> and it laughs and laughs and laughs. <laughs> like it kind of rattles on its hinges a little bit. It loved it. Ah, it was so nice meeting you, Dor, and I give it a little tickle and then I pass through oh. it. All right. And as you guys pass beyond the door that tried to bluff you, <laughs> we will take our break before you head the rest of the way up the tower. So joining us today were Pidge. Bye-bye. I'm honest. See you soon. Tin Man. Hello. And Amiri. We will be right back. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We hope that you're enjoying this episode of the Fire Breathing Kittens podcast. You can find new episodes by subscribing through your podcast player or by visiting firebreathingkittenspodcast.com. Can you think of a friend who might enjoy this podcast? Please share it with them. We don't pay to advertise this show, so the only way we can grow is through your support. Tweet hashtag firebreathingkittenspodcast, and we may, in a future episode, name a non-playable character after you. Leave us a review on iTunes, and we'll read your review at the end of an episode. Welcome back to Fire Breathing Kittens, a 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons podcast. We are rejoined by Pidge. Hello. Amonist. I survived. Tin Man. 
Hello. And Amiri. Bonjour. All right, I need you guys to all roll a d20. 18. Okay. 3. 13. 9. All right, we're going to have a roll off between the 3 and the 9 cuz I got a 6. Oh. So you're you're equidistant. <laughs> 19. Oh god, 19. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> 19. Five. All right. Tin Man, tell us what happened when last we met. <laughs> well, we were hired by an individual that Mary knew to find pieces of a crown to get rid of Loki with. Uh, we were sent to this massive cathedral full of constructs and very scrap metal pieces of... Obviously, a crafter had been using this location. Um, we just walked through a door with a face on it that was telling us it wasn't a good idea to go further. Okay. That is a quick summary. All right. You find yourselves in another stair stairwell behind the talking door and can hear sounds of tinging and pinging and grinding and general sounds of industry further up the stairwell. Well, it sounds like we're about to meet our maker. Har har har. But um <laughs> mm -hmm. pun intended. All right, well shall we proceed up the staircase same fashion as yes. before? Yes, yeah, same I think word. I'll go first. Do any of the and stairs glow? Are you casting Detect Magic again? Yes, we will do the same thing we did earlier. Okay. With even more steps being lit up. <laughs> so now You're making every, this work out. Every two steps are now glowing as, as you guys go up the stairs, <laughs> leading to the next floor. I don't know if I trust this, Amiri. <laughs> I think she just likes seeing us hop. You could do an insight check. All right, I'm going to do an insight check. Uh, the roll on deception? Mm hmm If you want 15. to deceive him, or if you want to just let him know it's a prank, that's that's your call. Okay. Ooh, uh, 19. No, it seems like Amiri is being very forthright and protective of you. She's oh, very that's trying real hard to keep you safe. <laughs> I am very, very religious. You think I would lie like that? <laughs> yes. I guess not. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Pranks are acceptable under the the guidance Religion. of Quotal. <laughs> All right. So you guys hop, hop your way up the tower and finally reach the very top. Uh, it you do. It does take. The bell, the fifteen-minute bell, does ring while you're on your way up, but there is a, a very thick stone wall between you and the cavity that holds the bells, so you don't get the uh, bone-shattering loudness that is the bells. It's still loud, but it's bearable. And you make your way all the way to the top, and it opens up into uh, another cluttered area. There's no bells here. But there's boxes and crates. There's a light coming from some kind of uh, smokeless forge. And you can see a large figure moving back and forth across this area. Um, and there's an archway that leads into the room where the large figure is. On either side of the archway are two suits of armor that are currently inert. Mm. I think we should avoid those armor I'm. Th uh, I think we should go up and talk to him very calmly and explain why we're here. You Let's know, how... avoid startling him. You know how I had good berries that I made earlier, about ten of them that the door didn't want. <laughs> Gonna yeah. eat those. Should we eat them? <laughs> I. Yeah, eat... you can make more of those, right? Should we all get back up to full health? You were at full, cause or oh, the the sound damage. The the bells. I whisper to my friends. Let's retreat down into the stairs and just take a quick short rest. <laughs> or 
can we have, for story purposes, short rested at the bottom of the stairs, right past the door? Sure. Okay, so that means we can use one hit dice. Okay. Or is, is what does that work? As many hit you dice as use... at a time? Yeah, you can use as many. And you gain back uh, half your hit dice every long rest. Okay, I used two hit dice to heal back to full. Back to full. Four dice. Rolled like bet. Rolled really bad. Is everybody else back at full? Yep. Um, I can't hear Tin Man. I cast him mending on my homun- my dog and my homunculus. Okay. So is everybody back at full? Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then we walked up the stairs. <laughs> uh, how is everybody's uh charisma? Not very good. I don't believe mine is good. So it's my one it's one of my dump stats, so not very good. My charisma is twelve, it's a plus one. Uh, persuasion's okay. only a one. And Mary, are you the prettiest, most kindest, nicest, most charismatic person here? I am. Do you I wanna... got an 18 for charisma. Do you want to speak for so, us? Yeah, I'll, I'll do the talking. Right. So I'm going to... So, nor Just not well, really before do you, quickly. So that you don't like make take actions without all your information. Just to, I don't want to be withholding here so while you guys are taking your short rest you're also kind of like glancing around the the stairwell and sort of uh not full-on investigating but you know just taking in your surroundings while you have the moment and you can see there's there's signs of uh you know old signs but signs of conflict battle that have happened in the stairwell you see some uh gouges in the the metal walls that you could you could tell where like they've been tr- buffed down and shined a little bit to try to get rid of them but there's definitely been over the years uh fighting that has occurred in this uh part of the stairwell and as you guys go up it you can see the sign the indications there's a lot more of them and they're all like the gouges are a lot deeper you can even see where some of the metal is kind of warped from where maybe it's been blasted with heat and there's you know little bits of armor scattered around a little bit this doesn't look oh, and pleasant. one thing that you know that you haven't seen in any part of this temple are any like religious tapestries or uh reliefs carved in the walls or I mean other than you were told this was a temple of Arathis and there is still that big symbol on the outside and there's some that are some of the gear symbolism you've not really seen anything indicating that this has been an active temple of Arathis in a long time is there anything that we could do here to stop this from being a fight because it just seems like there's nothing we can do really I mean yeah, it seems so like it was, was going to be a fight. Well, you can try. Can I mean, I spend, what was I'm, the... I'm, not, I'm not dead set on making you guys fight. That's why I'm giving you all the information that you would have... You know, you don't know what caused the battle scars that you're seeing. If it was people not so, being willing to So, what was the name negotiate. of the guy that had the Helm of Awe? The, the Maker has the... It's the heart of the Maker is what you need. That's the centerpiece of the Helm. Which seems evil to me to take someone's heart. But not everyone needs a heart. Some people have two. Uh, can I spend an hour at the bottom of the stairwell to make a clockwork frog work again? Sure. Okay. Because I, I was taking a short rest, so maybe that's what I was up to down there. And uh, let's see. Let me look at your character sheet real quick. Because you're a, you're a smart I th- cookie. I think there are, as well, multiple ways that we could try to stealth into this. So as well, if you, like I was saying earlier, if you were to blink in, or even if you could like blink up through the ethereal plane onto like the top of a bookshelf up there, you should be able, as long as blink works, which we'll know down here, um, you should be able to see into that room, see the, the, the maker's heart, you know, that golden disc, that see that it's in there, maybe be able to 
blink inside the, the, the clockwork mechanism of the thing's body, grab it, blink out. I mean, that's a possibility. That we sounds super evil. <laughs> that sounds extremely non-consensual. As opposed to just killing it outright? <laughs> I don't want to kill it at all, actually. I want it to voluntarily give me something that it doesn't need to survive. And if it does need to survive, I don't know if I want to take it. So Tin Man is fixing that bird that he captured earlier while during the one hour break. Okay. All right, Tin Man, give me, we'll say it's an arcana check, sure. And then Pitch, give me an arcana check with advantage. <laughs> Not 20. You put that bird back together so good. 23. So good. Okay. With a 23, you, you kind of get out your n notebook or something or however it is you kind of think through your uh, the possibilities of calculating. And I don't know how Pidge works as far as when she's like trying to figure stuff out, if you want to flavor that. But you're thinking about all of this. And at Construct, you, you've already found out that these soul of an artificer has been infused with the construct and it has something it's calling its heart the two don't have to be one and the same it could be using the the heart as a Metaphor. additional power source mm. or something to uh, you know extend its the extend its operating time without constant maintenance or all right as we say in the medical um, field the heart is just a stupid pump <laughs> actually i have an idea that's all it is a pump i have an i have an idea yeah how about i go in and nothing a mechanic likes more than talking shop with someone who knows what they're talking about okay if this fails you might die but if you're willing to try it Yes, we are both artificers. We are both constructs. We are both uh, into creating things. And my character is certainly willing to give it a shot. So, if nothing else, I would think you would get um, advantage on persuasion check. Do you want? That's... You guys want to try? <laughs> so that's some pretty heavy metagaming you're doing there, Monist. Uh... I think from a story perspective, it makes sense. Well, I mean, I still don't know how well a persuasion check is going to work because we've already been told that this thing has gone crazy um, and we have evidence of battle. So a, a crazy person doesn't separate itself from its possible victims. That's the the work of a very sane person who doesn't completely have self-control. So all the evidence we've seen so far is that this person has sequestered themselves to continue working. You're assuming that that's for the protection of victims. It may be that this person just doesn't like people. Agoraphobia also a is a sane thing. thing to do. Uh, they seem able to be reasoned I know. with. Now, if we do maybe. have to fight, maybe I'm only 50 feet behind, you know, down a few <laughs> loops of stairs. It's worth a try. I mean, we. I can. I mean, I'm technically. I'm probably the most, uh, even though, yes, and Mary has more charisma, my character is not quite the kind of people that he really, well, you know, you know what I mean. He, yeah. This guy seems to be into constructs. Give it a shot. And, and if it doesn't work out, we'll be just a few dashes away. I mean, we can also, like, wait right outside the door. During your long, your short rest, the, the 12... 12 hour bell would have chimed so now you know going back down if you have to go down the bell way if, if it chimes the one time that's way less rough on your body than if it were to chime 12 times <laughs> what does it do at one o'clock hmm? if it chimes once at 12 what does it do at one o'clock no at 12 it chimed 12 times ah. so on the upside you weren't exposed to 12 chimes oh good <laughs> you were you were safely in the corridor so my character opens the door to the room with the maker in it. So you step into this. It's um, kind of a two-part area. So there's an open space with the two suits of armor and an open archway. And beyond that is the room with the maker in it. 
Okay. My character slowly walks forward. All right, as you approach the archway, the animated or the armor animates and they they cross uh, spears ahead of you. So like in a do not pass sort of way and there's like a shk sound as they come together. Greetings. Uh, uh, my characters, are these con- uh, constructs or are they animated? Animated. Hello? My character calls out. You see this uh, large robotic form. It's sort of uh, hunched over. It's got a large upper torso and it turns towards you and its head or what what Dia's head is kind of in the center of its chest rather than up on a neck and these uh, small lens-like eyes blink at you and make sure I've got this a voice goes who are you? you have intruded a fellow craftsman you are not one of mine no. You are not welcome. I am a fellow craftsman interested in f- uh, other ones of our kind. I am an artificer as well, and as you can see, I am also like you. you see it sets down something that it was working on and approaches where you're standing. Ooh, it's a lady and it's, you're a it's, guy. <laughs> it, mm-hmm. Its head sort of swivels in, in this socket that's in the center of its che- chest. And, and you hear some whirring and whizzing. And it goes, you are inferior. You may leave. <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon. I am inferior. Ooh, show it the crow that you fixed. I, I pull the crow out. I am also a crafter. My character motions to the dog and his drone that he has following behind him. Uh, as soon as you pull the crow out, you see a, a red light flares inside of it, like the seams all this light is up yours. red. <laughs> that is mine. What have you yes. done? I have repaired it you, after it was you damaged. You have damaged my creation. It's not currently damaged, though. It is... You will release it. You will release it now. <laughs> Very well. My character releases the uh, the bird. You have impressive technique. Of course I do. I am the maker. Hmm. How did you bring about these creatures? I have not seen anything quite like them. Go ahead, guys. My character motions behind his back towards the group. <laughs> Go ahead, what? <laughs> well, you see that that red light hasn't stopped glowing. On the bur or the person on the, the crafter yeah, on the maker. Yeah. I see. My character's released the bird. She turns her back to you and goes, "You are dismissed." <laughs> oh. Okay, my character walks back to the group. I don't think it's so much insanity. I think it is that this person, or this creature, has become more machine than anything. We're all just machines. I reach and stretch my arms behind my head, leaning back, thinking, can I try? (sighs) Sure, go ahead. Can I have your dog and bird thing sure they follow behind you all right i'm gonna try to walk up to the spears cross in front of me yeah okay i say well they're still crossed i guess is really maker a wonderful maker and sort of pauses what it's doing i have brought a gift for you to offer up How I worship and acknowledge your wonderful skills. I kneel down and I offer the clockwork frog in front of me. And I say, this is for you. A gift. uh, The red changes to just a nice light white 
glow coming from out, it seems, and it comes over with the zzzup, zzzup sounds <laughs> of mechanisms. It takes the frog. Interesting. Rudimentary, but interesting. Your skills are so far beyond my comprehension. Yes, I am the maker. You are wonderful. <laughs> Turns back, goes into her workshop. <laughs> May I learn from you? Give me a persuasion check with advantage. Oh, I'm so bad at these, though. <laughs> well, advantage helps. Um, non-natural 20. Uh, she will turn back and motion to the animated armor and goes, yes, you may stay. I Thank turn you. to the others. We might have a fight on our hands. I don't think... Um, can you guys... Uh, I, I, can I message to Amiri or just do I have to say this? Can you guys give me like a day to learn from the maker and just like camp out in the organ room? <laughs> you got rations and a tent, I'm sure. Sure. Take a long rest. Very well. <laughs> All right. Are we actually going to do that? Mm. Yeah. yeah, why not? It's not that far. We'll hear the scream. <laughs> uh, if I die, it's my own fault. <laughs> Save yourselves. <laughs> All right. So, I yeah, I want to learn from the maker. I'm going to just stand there and watch as she does what she does. I'd like to take notes, maybe. Write down what I All see. Right. What's she making? All right. As, as you watch, she goes back over to this table, and she is making another uh, automaton. This one is much more humanoid in shape, and she's currently uh, attaching an arm to it. As you watch her, you can see that periodically she has what could only be called power surges, and kind of there's uh, sparks, and she kind of glitches for a second, but then continues working. I mostly stay completely silent. Every now and then I go, wow, so cool. And then after so... about eight hours, I say, Maker, my lowly rock gnome body requires rest. May I return tomorrow after a period of rest? You may stay. And she points to a, a pile of stuff in the corner. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, may I stay in the organ room downstairs? You must stay here. Hmm. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, this is a dilemma. I need to relieve myself. My lowly rock gnome body requires messy output. You can see she pauses for a minute. And you can hear like a lot of whirling and whizzing in her little, well, not little, but in in her, in her innards. And finally, she speaks and she goes, "That is right. You are an inferior being. I forget sometimes. You may relieve yourself." Thank you. I will be back. You are so wonderful to learn from. I actually have never seen a humanoid automaton before, so I'm, I've written <laughs> sketches and, like, I've diagrammed. Pidge is actually really into this. And she goes back mm -hmm. downstairs to the organ room to meet her friends. You guys, look at these that... awesome sketches that I got. Oh, my gosh, she's so cool. Did you really just say like you've never man. seen a mechanical humanoid before? Not the inside of one. Yeah. I share my sketches with Tin Man, of course. Did you know your arm looks like this on the inside? <laughs> my character opens a panel. Yes. <laughs> That's so cool. All right. I definitely relieve myself because that part was not a lie. <laughs> that must be a relief. Uh -huh. Aha. <laughs> Papun. <laughs> and then I share with you guys. Yeah, she's really cool. I don't think we should take her heart unless... It's something that she can part with. I saw her do some power surges, you guys. I don't know. Maybe the heart isn't good for her. Maybe it's something that she might have assimilated with the hopes of incorporating successfully, but it looks like it's causing her to power surge and jerk around. Could we replace it with something else? That's a great question. Do we have anything that we could... Tin Man, you're such a smart... Do we know what it looks like? Do we know what it looks like? The, the shape and the appearance of this item? Yes, it's two yes. inches. 
And it's a golden disc, disc with a cross and some lines coming out from the cross. Tin Man, would it be possible for you to make something valuable that's less powerful that she could use that maybe wouldn't power surge her? I do not know. I have a lot of gold to give you. I have a chunk of Electrum. I don't know if I can make something actual that would have any effect on her, though. I could make a counterfeit item, but an actual item? Well, keep in mind, it's not... Like, it's made out of gold. It's not the metal that's... It doesn't have any electrical energy. It has magical energy that's that's powering her. So we would need to imbue it with magic, not electricity. Okay. Step one is I give you 2,000 gold pieces of material to practice with. Okay. So my character is going to be spending some time... Uh, problem is, I don't... Tin Man has, doesn't. There's an image on. You said there's an image on it. My character doesn't know the exact image that's on, would be on it. It was described to well, us it, a cross with lines. So at least do a cross on it. Are okay. you trying to make like a, a a fake replacement or an actual yeah. alternative? A less powerful uh, replacement. This is gonna be tricky. Um, I have Witch Bolt, so if we need the electricity, I can do that. Electricity is not a problem. I also have that spell, so yeah. I can try. I can make no guarantees about the functionality of the item, though, and whether it would do uh, su uh, suffice. Okay. Well, let's make some few alternatives, and I'll go back up again for another day and let you guys think about it. And you can make some prototypes. Yes. Um. All right. Of materials. Here are 2,000 gold pieces. <laughs> yes. So, just DM intervention here. If this is the route you guys are going to try, I could remind you that there is a whole temple full of discarded materials, half inventions, failed <laughs> creations. <laughs> you could it's true. go salvaging. Um, All right. Yes. My character takes the stairs down, uh, making sure to avoid the stairs that Mary pointed out earlier, and tapping a few of them with a, a st with a just his sword, tap 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 from a distance, you know. <laughs> yeah, the glowing ones. <laughs> yeah, because they're no longer lit up. Okay. Oh, my character. <laughs> if only somebody had yeah. a way to mark them. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we can do. Uh, give me just an intelligence check True, to remember yeah, which I ones are which. One on my intelligence check. <laughs> Isn't it Mary? Isn't it Mary with you? Even with a with my intelligence, that's a nine. Could just identify the still... steps for him. Uh my character's best ability and he just had a brain fart you have no idea you get to those stairs and you're like oh they all look the same to me <laughs> all right i'll go down with them okay i'm gonna see coming <laughs> yep i'm going i spend right, a second and... day taking good notes and getting close to the maker amiri just wants to figure this out the quicker she could stop loki the better so my character collects up the as much scrap as he can manage using the uh, altar as a workstation. Uh, begins to try to craft a. Di uh, well, I don't exactly Alrighty. know what. Okay. Well, f prototypes. First, um, Pidge. Day two, uh, the maker will allow you to start making copies of schematics. Oh my gosh! Oh yeah, copies of schematics! I look super happy. <laughs> she seems pleased by your interest. Do I need to make an investigation check? Um, well, first do... Are, are you going to be looking around for... 22. First. All right. So. 22. 
Yeah, Amiri and Tin Man and Amonist, if you mm-hmm. want to do investigation checks to root around and all of the wayward junk to see if you can salvage anything that might be a replacement battery. 14. Right. Sure. You know what? Let's let's boost that a little for my for my character. Um, flash of inspiration, make it a twenty-seven. Uh, and Amiri, twenty-one. Whoa! <laughs> All righty. Um, Amonis, you find um, several tools that look like with some minor mending might might be useful. Could be helpful. They're very delicate, small tools. Could be something that your party might uh, find useful. Okay. Uh, Amiri, you you find a few components that seem to have uh, at least a little bit of power in them. They glow or uh, when you press a button on a weird object, it kind of whirs for a second. So you're thinking like maybe, maybe there's something to that and you take it to Tin Man and then Tin Man... Uh, you're able to take apart those components, use the tools that uh, a monist has found, and then also salvage a few more uh, bits and pieces that seem to have some kind of arcane uh, power to them that seem to be acting as battery sources and are able to craft a slightly bulkier than a two-inch disc but okay. a a battery of some sort. You're not sure exactly how powerful it would be, but it does seem to uh, okay. be a uh, stable power supply. You're, you you watch it for a while to make sure that it doesn't have surges, and it seems to be fairly s- static. All right, let's go get that helm. So, after day two, I come back down to the room and I see the battery that you've made. And I'm like, look at you, Tin Man. You are pretty skilled yourself. Why, thank you. I'm not inferior like he claims I am. My character doesn't usually show emotion, but right now, he's definitely showing a bit of it. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I can imagine. Pretty lady said you weren't good at what you actually are yeah that's mifflin uh well i say i've grown quite fond of her well the maker if she doesn't have any practice with her social skills you can't blame her that much maybe she sure. should be the one to try to talk her into switching the batteries okay um since she's already fond of her i could try that i uh i guess i do you want to give me the battery tin man my character prepares his equipment for combat just in case. You notice he dumps out of his out of the bag of holding and powers up his armor and weapons now that the bag of holding is no longer a bag of holding. <laughs> I have to switch out magical items but I but I infuse with items if I want to change uh, my equipment, so Okay. Day three. <laughs> I walk up to... Okay. All right. Pidge. <laughs> role play time. What? It's time for you to do some role play. Okay. Explain. Convince the maker that they need to relinquish the battery they have in exchange for this lesser battery. And yeah. why? Okay, my tactic is going to be to focus on the power surges. So first, uh, the day starts, I approach the two statues. I say, hi, left, hi, right. They allow you in. Nice to see you guys. I stand quietly for at least two hours watching the maker work and copying schematics. I wait for her to power surge. And she does. I ask the maker. like the more focused she is, the more it happens. Ooh. Okay. I asked the maker, what was that shake that you just did? It looks like it interfered with your work. It is a necessary component. 
It's the right tact to take here. Your work is so beautiful. Would it be easier for you to work if you did not shake like that when you power surged? Without the additional power, I would expire and my creations would be left defenseless. No, 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 that would be terrible. I would love to give you a gift in exchange for all of this wonderful knowledge that you have given. Would it be possible for me to give you this, which might not cause the power surges? And I'm just going to try to give her the the second one. That's inferior, but it won't cause her power surges. That perhaps it may steady your hand and guide you to more effortless creation. All right, she will take it from you. And she's uh, got kind of one of her arms is sort of a has a pincher hand on it. And she takes it and puts it in front of her uh, face that's in the middle of her chest and looks at it and, you know, twists it this way. And that uh, the construction seems solid. These are components from my warehouse. All in-house pieces, so you know with the vertical integration exactly where they came from, and that there's good, solid material all through. We might need to go up there, Ominous. Yeah, I'm it, waiting for it. If pitch so, dies here, like it's dies. working, though. It's fine. She does seem to be really thinking it over. And I'm not trying to and take anything she... from her. I just want to give her yeah. this gift. She seemed pretty torn up with that bird, though. It seems like we ruined one of her creations. She could be pretty upset. All right, so give me the persuasion check with advantage. Oh, no. And I'm I'm not trying to take anything. I'm just trying to give her a gift. Yeah, I know. I'm not very persuasive, so it's a nine, because that's just... Uh, I's not good at that. Uh, she just... She takes it and uh, just sets it on a shelf beside her and continues working okay day three fail <laughs> all right i just continue watching and then at the end of the day i'm gonna go back down and i i bow and i thank her for the ability to learn from her and i head back down and i'm like all right guys did you get any better at making those because <laughs> wasn't super great <laughs> unfortunately no we've got a few days of rations <laughs> <laughs> Amonis and Mary. I, I, th I don't think the problem was the battery, because I think that battery would have worked. I think we need to have another attempt at persuasion to get her to try swapping them out. Okay. We might have to fight. You guys are so battle... battle... Or if, or if we do fight, we might have to repair her with it now that we know it's on the shelf up there. Can you just make me a better After one so I can fight. try again with version 2.0? An iteration on the previous. All right. Can I find the... I'm going to do an investigation, see if I can find the mater the materials to do it again. Maybe it's like... Uh, you guys ever seen Captain oh. Planet when they all like come together? <laughs> the power of heart and wind <laughs> should all contribute to okay. this thing. There you go. Investigation for materials, people. How do we all contribute? Not all right. <laughs> uh, well, we already did that. So. Flip the switch on this a little bit. How about a skill challenge? Each of you can contribute a skill of your choosing that you are proficient in, and it has to make sense to creating a new battery that will be better. Yeah. Okay. Woo. I can do Arcana, that's what I'm pretty good at doing, so... Okay. I got sleight of hand. So you'll assist with moving in delicate pieces? Yes. I was also going to choose that. Can we, do, uh, can we go through the same thing? It would be more interesting if you went with different things. Can I do... Can I do acrobatics to grab things off of really high shelves that we pick... It, if you want to do sleight of hand, I, I also have a really high perception, too. So I could kind of watch. I don't know. Seeing it done once, I could be like, oh, no, that's got to go over here and over there. That works, too. Like I said, or or I, I'm, I'm also proficient in, in acrobatics. I can I can like hop through the piles of stuff and like grab things off of like the tip top of 
piles and off of high shelves and all that kind of stuff. Okay. I'm willing to go with that. And then Pidge. Pidge is good at things other people are good at, but she's also good at artificer's lore. Magical item history gives me two times proficiency. So I'm going to think about all of the books that I have read and recall from this learned knowledge about magical items materials that Amonis should be looking for as he hops around. Because I say, oh no, not copper. That one's not as good. Electrum's better. Flash of, an, uh, flash of inspiration on Pidge. Plus she's okay. got blueprints. I already found Electrum, remember? <laughs> yeah, and this is the lore that... Yeah, perfect. And so so I'm going to try to roll. I rolled an 18 on the dice, and I get plus 6, plus 5. So 18 plus 6 plus 5. Okay. 18 plus 6 plus 5. So that was 29 before... <laughs> you don't have to necessarily boost me with anything. <laughs> I know, but I'm... Yeah, I feel like once you hit 20, you're kind of good. <laughs> so with the 29, I recall so much material engineering information for you, and I'm like, oh, throw the silver out. It oxidizes and it turns black. It's nasty. Yeah, you want stainless steel. <laughs> <laughs> Since I've, we've been doing this multiple days, my re re flash of inspiration recharge is practically every time we do this, so I can... <laughs> <laughs> all right, Amonis, what do you get on your uh, acrobatics to flip around and find all the hard-to-reach material components? Got a 19. A 19, all right. Plus flash of inspiration, so 24. Okay, 24. My, char my character is throwing around flashes of inspiration at everybody right now, so... All right, Miri, to help. Uh, Flash of inspiration. I rolled the 13 plus 6, 19. What did you do? All right. Plus the inspiration. So use the sleight of hand. I kind of help uh, Tin Man kind of like with the very fragile little tiny pieces. Like this goes here. This goes here. And I'll make my, and I'll make my Arcana check with flash oh good thing I use that flash of inspiration that's a 15 mm -hmm. well luckily you've got all this help yeah it takes everybody coming together like Captain Planet <laughs> mm -hmm. you or are able to make a superior battery that is much more stable much more powerful and it even looks kind of stylish. It's got racing stripes. May I? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> May I give it to him this time or this time? Oh, we kind of have a friendship. Maybe you should though. accompany together so that you have like Pidge's cred. Okay, I will ask if I can bring a friend. So day four, and I show up. I say hi left, hi right. <laughs> They don't animate. They they let they let you pass. Okay, I take notes for like a solid hour before I ask a question. Okay. May I bring a friend, an inferior being like myself, who also would like to learn? You have not hindered me. I suppose it would be acceptable. Okay. Thank you so much. I will bring them tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Day five, baby. Uh. <laughs> so I head back down. I tell Tin Man, all right, so here's the deal. Your first day, don't bring it up. Just take good notes, all right? <laughs> How much food do we got <laughs> remaining for the for all of you guys? Do you eat? You don't eat, and I have good berries, so. <laughs> oh, that's right. Full for 24 hours. Exactly. Good berries means you never starve to death. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> so much. Thank you. All right. So day six, I bring up Tin Man and I say, hi, left. Hi, right. We brought Tin Man. And they start to cross their spears, but then the maker goes, they may pass. All right. Now remember, Tin Man, just good notes today. My character takes notes. Can I, can I know how to make a construct after this? <laughs> hmm? Can Pitch know how to make a construct after this? How do you connect that part to that part? My character just is asking various questions <laughs> of the of the maker as he 
watches. And or that yeah, my character is getting into this, so she do- she doesn't give you like verbal instructions, but she does like shift so that you know you could see better as she is creating Aww, her automaton. She's so nice. Aww. Uh, but Ten Man, you also witness the power surges and sparks that occur, and. You don't really see very many of the drones at this point. Like, occasionally one, like, will be in there, but then it scurries off. Okay. Because you guys don't seem to be attacking or doing (laughs) anything. You're not breaking things. You're not a threat. Yeah, we're Uh, friends. At this point, Amiri's just reading a book. (laughs) All right. Can we start day seven? Sure, yeah. Okay, I give you so so many blue good berries, by the way, you guys. You have <laughs> good berries. You're, you're and... solid on food. Yeah. And so the start of day seven. Hi left. Hi right. Master, I have noticed your troubles with power surges. I have brought you a present. And she stops and uh, t- spins like her upper part so her legs and stuff are still facing her work table but turns around and then takes a weird step forward <laughs> with backwards legs a character holds up the far superior power supply that we had crafted <laughs> she looks at it this is interesting so do you want to give me a persuasion check with advantage to get her to swap them out? Yes, and I'll use a flash of inspiration. And I'll use flash of inspiration to... God, I love this ability. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's only mostly broken. <laughs> yep, because Pidge was not charismatic on her own, shall we say. <laughs> that comes out to an ugly 20. All right. Uh, as you're doing that, she has one of her power surges, which gives her pause uh, before she denies it. And uh, I am willing to give your item a trial. And but once uh, the uh, the gnome Pidge will assist. Yeah, I would like to make sure that. She's safe at all times. So, like, at one point she has two hearts, you know, and rather than disconnect one and try to put in the other real quick, just connect both and and not have it turned on, you know. She does summon a couple of her uh, drones to stay in guard while this is happening. But you see uh, a panel in her back opens up and slides to the side, and there is... The, the disc that is called the Maker's Heart, right there. So, just so this is super fair, Pidge, you're going to roll a d20. If it's a 1 to 10, things don't go right. If it's an 11 to 20, you're able to swap them out. <laughs> I'm looking at my dice really scared right now. <laughs> I... I'm afraid... <laughs> Uh, I really hope that this goes well, because I like her. Um, please, 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 please. That's a six, because a pidge is not lucky. I don't want to hurt her. How does inspiration? Uh, inspiration. Can, I, I, no, this is a pure luck check. I don't want to hurt her. I was going to say, I have inspiration. No, there's no, there's no modifiers for just a straight up and down. How are the fates going to handle this? I would have given her That's my flash that. of inspiration ability if, it, if I had known that it, that it would work. So You can't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what happens? Yeah. All right. Dun, so you go dun, to, dun. you reach towards the coin. And as you do so, uh, it starts sparking and flaring and glowing red. Uh-oh. And then the red lights shoot all through her system and you hear the whirring and the shield on her back snap shut 
And as she turns back, her eyes are glowing red. And in a different, deeper voice, she goes, Intruders! Intruders! Uh, Intruders! Uh, and now you can roll initiative. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's run up the Here stairs. I don't want to fight her. I'll just let her kill me. Wait, what? Yeah. We can repair her afterwards. Non-natural 20. Uh, the time I roll a natural 20. Uh, 23. I got a, f- I got a 15. <laughs> yeah, I vote that after after we take her down, we repair her with this new battery, and then uh, she'll honey, be all better. If you think I'm fighting her, you're wrong. <laughs> what? Come on. I would fight you. <sighs> Why? Because I have a character sheet that says her. that I am flawed. Because I am loyal to my friends. We're your We're friends. friends, aren't we? Mm. <laughs> All right, Pidge, what did you get? Non natural for 20. seven days. And then Amiri. 23. You could always blink the, the evil heart out of her, and then we can put the new heart into her. Clearly, that thing monist. is not working out for her. Oh, I got a 23. To like save her from herself? Yeah. Yeah, yeah clearly that thing is evil. Yeah, it's a defective part. In a good person. Oh, have you guys seen Idle Hands? Yes. It, I have not. This dude's hand tries to like strangle him. It's, it's evil. Um, <laughs> at the end yeah, of the movie, so he chops like it off. <laughs> we have to save the maker. Yeah, from herself. All right. So a monist and a Miri, you guys hear this uh, change in circumstance and start making your way. Uh, great. <laughs> To the maker's room, I assume. Yeah. You tell me. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We've been sitting around for a week. We're just like, we, we, we need action. Like, every, every day we've been ready and waiting for this to happen. I already just spent a week reading a book. Alrighty. The maker uses one of her layer actions and... Layer actions? Yeah. Layer. Oh. This is where she lives. She's in her yep. layer. I don't know what that is. What layer. Those are. Like an evil layer. No, no. I, like I know what a layer is. I don't know what layer actions are. <laughs> There's special actions that she gets to take. Extra. Okay. And points her... to a, a suit of armor that's been uh, just sort of hanging out in the corner of her workshop. And it comes to life and steps between her and you guys, and takes a defensive stance. Pidge, what do you want to do? Hmm. Uh, Am I holding the superior battery replacement? I believe so. Yes, because you were going to be the one switching them out. Okay. I'm going to cast Blink. So just to read what that is. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Blink. Third level transmutation spell, casting time one action, range self, components verbal and somatic, duration one minute. Roll a d20 at the end of each of your turns for the duration of the spell. On a roll of 11 or higher, you vanish from the current plane of existence and appear in the ethereal plane. At the start of your next turn, and when the spell ends, if you are on the ethereal plane, you return to an unoccupied space of your choice that you can see within 10 feet of the space you vanished from. If no unoccupied space is available within that range, you appear in the nearest unoccupied space. I can dismiss this spell as an action. While on the ethereal plane, I can see and hear the plane I originated from, which is cast in shades of gray, and I can't see anything more than 60 feet away. I can only affect and be affected by other creatures on the ethereal plane. Creatures that aren't there can't perceive me or interact with me unless they have the ability to do so. I rolled a d20 and I got a 1, so I'm still here for right now. (laughs) My plan is to blink so that I don't have to hurt her as I replace the thing. So I'm here for now. Right. <laughs> the maker gathers up the automaton that she has been working on and retreats away from you and Tin Man and motions for the two drones that are in there to uh, cover, to take, to move in to the space that she was just in to create a barrier between herself and you guys. Um, And yes, so then those guys are going to, one of them 
tries to punch Pidge. Yikes. And it gets an 11, so it just it just punches. <laughs> yeah, most things hit me. <laughs> You're going to take two points of bludgeoning damage. Oh, it does miss okay. you with the other punch, though. So you just get a, a, a slight whack in. And then the other one, the other one attacks Tin Man, but only hits with one punch. Oh, what's the what, what's the roll? It's a seventeen plus nope. three. I enhanced right? my armor. No, plus plus three. It's it's three points. So of getting punched. All right, <laughs> but whatever. But it's your turn, Tin Man. This drone just punched yes, you. Yes, it is. Like a sucker. You were talking. You mean the uh, suit of armor? Or a drone. No, okay. it's a it's a drone. My character raises his long sword and swings it at the drone. Uh, that's a sixteen. Yep, that'll hit. Only eight points of damage. Okay, the maker screams in fury as you swing at one of her drones. Amonis, you arrive on the scene. What do you do? Okay. You, you see, the I... maker is backing away from. Pidge and uh, Tin Man. She's got a automaton cradled in her arms, and there's uh, drones attacking your friends. And she's glowing uh, red. What available targets do I have? Drones. Eh, let's go for the drones, I guess. Um, I'm going to attack the drones. Am I going to incur any attacks of opportunity if I do so? You will have to pass the suits of armor leading into the room, but they haven't uh, apparently they activated. activated yet. Okay. All right. So, uh, uh, so let's see. First one is a 15 to hit. Next one's also a 15. And then last one is an 18 to hit. Okay, the 18 will hit a drone. And the armor does activate as you rush past it. Then I am also going to use an action surge. Are you slashing huh? your swords? What's going on visually? Yes, I am slashing my swords at these drones. And I am also going to use my action surge. So uh, one of the buttons on my moccasin starts to glow and a uh, illusionary crashing ocean wave follows behind me and trips up the um, the uh, the statues so that they cannot take attacks of opportunity against me. Okay. To narrate, a monist's red slippers flash and an illusory waves uh, pushes back left and right as they try to strike at a monist, but he dashes right past him and hits at the drones with the sabers. And then the next two hits are a 25 and a non-natural 20. Yes, those will hit. Okay, so total three of these are hitting. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, these are some bad rolls. All right, I'm going to start by attacking the one that was already damaged. Uh, first mm -hmm. hit does 11 damage. All right. And I'm just going to keep going. Let me know when, it's, uh, when that one's down. Um, this is non-lethal damage as well. I want them down, but not destroyed. I want them to be able to be repaired. Okay. Um, that one's not quite down yet. Next hit is a seven. Seven points. Yep. All right. That one's down. And then the last so hit goes towards the other one. Six points of damage. Okay. Like a whirling fury so of blades, Amonist surges into the room on a powerful wave and strike, 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 strike takes down a drone. Yep, slash, slash, slash. Takes on a drone. Wave crashing around. It's pretty cool. All right, so to recap, in the room, there is the one suit of armor already in there that was between you guys, but all it's done is move in defensively. One drone left, the maker, who's carrying her automaton. And then, Amiri, what would you like to do? So there's one armor left. One drone. Well, there's one armor in the room. There's the two armor at the archway leading into the room that just activated. Left and right. Mm -hmm. But Amonas didn't get hit by because of his Judy Garland boots. 
So going through, I'm going to get hit by those two armor. Unless you don't pass them, you can fire something from back there. I could. Or fly over them. I don't know if there's that much room. I'm just in a stairwell. Mm. All right, I'll, I'll shoot my Eldritch Blast at the last drone. Okay. That is a 26, and the second one is a 23. Those both hit. For 24 damage. As you see a light, a celestial light in the illuminate from the stairs, you see two crackling beams of energy shoot through the void and come crashing into the droid. Woo! Celestial support! (laughs) That kind of, it, it hits and almost for a second it seems like it's absorbed but then there's like a pulse and the little drone explodes and showering little bolts and springs <laughs> and cogs everywhere alrighty I'm gonna let my my dog and drone be up now so do they need to roll initiative or what's the deal with those or do you want them to go on your turn or I typically have them go last, and but I can have them. I'll let them go last. Anyways, they're, I rolled initiative for them, and they're okay. last in initiative, so I'll just let them go. All right, so my my they're probably at the on the stairs of the Mary, so I'll have them. Oh, uh, the drone will attack with its ranged attack first. Anything left left in the room? Yeah, there's a suit of armor, and then the two suits of armor on the outside of the room. Okay, the drone is going to shoot into the room with the one suit of armor okay. with its force blast. Left or right? And misses. The dog is going to attack one of the suits of armor on the stairs. So this, just to remember, it's wearing the skin of a carnival giant dog, right? Right. All right. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> with the carnival stuffed animal skin flapping as it bounds <laughs> forward, it attacks, right? <laughs> yes, it does. And sinks its mechanical fangs into it. I had for- forgotten about that. That's a 24, which I'm pretty sure hits, right? So seven points of force damage. Mm-hmm. Yes, that will hit. All righty. It takes seven points of force damage as the dog latches on to its shin plate. The maker is going to use a lair action. And what does she want to do? She's going to try to cast command on a monist. Uh-oh. <laughs> um... I think I have resistance to this, don't I, as an elf? Charm. Yeah. Uh, let, me, let me pull it up. Depends Advantage if it's on a charm. saving throws against charm and and magic can't put you to sleep. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. All right, so it's going to be a wisdom saving throw. Let me see if it says anything about charm. It does not. So, wisdom saving throw. Okay, I get a plus zero, but I rolled a 17, so... Oh. All right, you save. She tries to shout, okay. defend me, Aww. but you're, it doesn't work. Uh, Pidge. Pidge readies what would you like to do? a movement so that she will move onto the maker's back near where the battery plate is so that I can... Switch out the batteries. And then at the end of my turn, okay. I blink into the ethereal plane. I readied the movement upon blinking. So then through the ethereal plane, I move onto the maker's back. And until my next turn, that's where I am in the ethereal plane. Excellent. All right. The maker. Oh, I have to roll. <laughs> for... Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. 14. I actually I accomplished the blinking. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. The maker reaches to the side and grabs a a large hammer and swings towards you, a monist. Uh, But misses, because she only 
got a 13 to hit. She's trying to back away from you. So it's like wildly swinging. The drones are dead. Mark that off. Tin Man, what would you like to do? Okay, uh, Tin Man is going to swing at the armor again. Do have two attacks, so why not use both? That is a 28 and a 13. I'm guessing only one hits, right? Correct. That is a 13 points of damage. Alrighty. What are you doing to damage? Is your weapon a sword or a... It's a sword. Are you striking it left or right or the one in the room? Uh, and the one in the room. It would be the one in the room. Okay. So you strike a... Uh, where are you hitting it? It with a sword. Are you slashing its legs out from under it, trying to lop off an arm or take off its head? Or stabbing it right in the chest? Take off its <laughs> head. <laughs> Tin Man, one construct fighting another. Have you guys ever seen like Robo, the r- little Robo punching machines? <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> Rock'em, sock'em robots. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what a magical time we live in. All right. The armor that you're attacking retaliates rock em. Um, sock em. <laughs> but definitely does not hit you the let's see armor now known as right tries to stab at your robot dog that's a 17 plus 4 with the long sword so 21 to hit robot dog uh, yeah that's a hit we hear the ripping of fabric <laughs> as the, the cloth outer covering around the dog gets slashed. <laughs> yep, that's what we're mending is for. <laughs> All right, that is going to be 11 points of slashing. Okay. And then you had a little construct on that was attacking left, right? Correct? Yes. No, yep. no, it was, it was oh, shooting it, into the room. It, it was shooting the one okay. in the room because it's ranged attack. And I guess... Uh, Left will turn and stomp into the room to defend the maker. Uh, But it's going to take its full movement to get all the way over there to you guys. So that's what left does. But now left is behind you, Tin Man. Okay. That's kind of cool. Like, you're busy fighting one person and then behind you a tall mechanical shape looms. But then your friend saves you. (laughs) Behind you. All right. So this is roughly where Dog and your other buddy. What is other buddy called? Zero two. All right, zero one and zero two. This is roughly where you inserted them, so they can do things if you would like them to. Okay, zero one will attack his target from before. Mm-hmm. That is an eighteen. It does not hit the armor. Zero two will attack the one in the room that he was attacking before with its ranged attack. Uh, I'm guessing a 17 doesn't hit either. Nope. Yeah. Your companions vigilantly try to defend you. It sees a construct rise up behind you and shoots, but misses. The construct raises its sword threateningly behind Tin Man. All right. A monist. All right. I'm going to try to attack the... Um, the statue as well. Which one? The one that's injured. The one that Tin Man is Rock'em Sock'em slashing it, or the one behind Tin Man that's yes. raising a sword looming, threatening over him? Behind him. The one that Tin Man is already engaged with. Okay. Okay. I uh, rolled for my three sword slashes. I got 12, 23, and 17. The 23 will hit. Just the 23. Okay. Yeah, it's literally a suit of armor. <laughs> yeah, I'm not very good at this today. Um, and I got 11 points of damage. So one sword slash right across its across its back there. 11 points of damage. Doesn't seem super effective. It's a giant sword of armor. It, it is taking the damage, though. It does... Uh, yes. You can see it's... Uh, Structural integrity is uh, being depleted. That's good. Yeah. And Miri. All right. So very important questions. Mm-hmm. How f- exactly how far away from the maker am I? You're about 40 feet. 
Okay, and is there any room behind the maker? Or is the maker, like, backed up in the wall? Uh, there is room behind the maker. It's, uh, there's probably ten feet between it and the wall. Okay, so I am going to Dimension Door exactly 42 feet. Just slightly off the ground so I could be floating. Okay. Uh, you attempt to use Dimension Door. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, boy. And instead of landing where you meant to stand, you're back at the bottom of the steps. Oh, gosh. <laughs> And Mary pops out of the room and doesn't. I was pop never back in the in. room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was in the. Like I was the, in the stairwell. Yeah, so you're back at the bottom of the steps. Got to run back up them. Yeah, I have I have a list of spells, and that just happens to be one of the ones that has an effect. That's weird. Um. All right, the. Maker is going to use a lair action and she makes a whirring sound and that forge that's over on one side uh, seems to flash with light and a, a puff of dark smoke billows out and fills the room. So everybody needs to make a constitution saving throw. I am in the ethereal plane. Yes, exactly. So what are you trying to do? <laughs> and I am at the bottom against of the what stairs. exactly? Hmm. What what's this constitution save for? Uh, yeah. Twelve. I'm at the bottom of the stairs. Uh, that is an eighteen. Yeah. So I guess it. Yeah. So uh, Amonis, you take three points of poison damage. As the oh, you, you get a big whiff I have of resistance smoke. to poison. You take one point. You take one point of poison damage. <laughs> oh, I'm immune to poison. No, I'm not immune. I'm resistant. I'm resistant as well. So, okay, then you also take a point. But the uh, the room is also um, obscured for a round, so it's hard to see in here right now. It's full of smoke. And Pidge. Paige blinks out of the ethereal plane where she was on the back of the maker and tries to do the battery exchange again. All right. So give me a, I guess we'll call it a dexter or a uh, sleight of hand to pop open the panel and swap them out. Uh, I might have difficulty popping open this panel. I rolled a two and I have a plus one, so that's three. <laughs> Yeah, you, you're not able to pry it open this round, but you're ready. You're still there. Hey, guys, can you guys open this panel? <laughs> I say, and then I, I let's see if I blink back again. Yeah, I, I blink back into the ethereal plane after failing to open the panel. <laughs> I'm very useless by myself. <laughs> All righty. The maker. What does the maker want to do? Oh. Yeah, the maker... It's just, she'll take swings. Swings are always good. So she'll swing at, I think a monist was still the closest, right? Sure. Yeah. Why not? With her big hammer. And she misses. Um, and, and then she's going to command her, the animated armor in the room with you to attack again. So it's going to go after Tin Man. The 16 plus, I think it was four. So a 20 to hit. That's a hit. Was that the one oh. that was standing behind him with the raised sword that everybody just let hit him? <laughs> uh, uh, no, actually, it was the one right in front of him. Oh, that was the rock and Between two robot. people. <laughs> Popped yeah. you in the face. Uh, but that is only five points of slashing damage. Okay. And. Then it is your turn, Tin Man. The dog and the and the, nope. the it's the, drone. We're not right? back to yeah. them yet. It's you, then the armor, then them. Okay, yeah, okay. Tin Man is going to swing his sword twice again. Uh, twenty-eight and a 
22. Yes, those will both hit. So six and seven. All right. It, it, it is barely hanging on, but it is. It's, it's shaking in its animated booties, but it is still <laughs> still defending. Uh, and it will. So the one in front of you is going to turn and swing at a monist because, you know, been hitting it from the back, but that's only a 13, so that ain't going to do it. The big one that's been looming behind you, uh, 10 man swings, it misses. And the one by the door is going to get a 22 to hit, 0 1. All right. And 0 1 will take six points of slashing damage. And it is now 0 1 and 0 2's turn. All right. 0 1 is going to attack its target. That is a 24 for six points of damage. And 0 2, 15 probably misses. The dog bites right on the shin again. Okay. Yes. Okay. A monist. All right. Um, the maker's within reach of me, correct? Uh, she's moved about ten feet away from you, but you could okay. you could easily Pretty get close. to her. Yes. And and her workbench is within reach of me as well, correct? Yes. Okay. So I have action and a bonus action on this turn right Mm -hmm. yes all right so for my so i'm gonna grab some of the like like grease off of her bench um i assume there is some there right she's been tinkering it's reasonable okay yeah i'm gonna grab some off of there i'm gonna run up to her the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to smear that grease over her eyes to to um, try to reduce her visibility in case that this is unsuccessful and this battle goes on for a bit. Okay. And then I am going to use my my um, my bonus action to do a um, sleight of hand and pop that panel open for Pidge. Yay! All right. So so just give me an. A regular attack roll to get the grease on her eyes. Uh, 16 plus whatever. Do I, do I get to add my modifier to that? Uh, yeah, I mean, you're, you're proficient with 16. your hands. <laughs> okay, yeah. Six, six, so 16 plus 8 is 24. All right. Yeah, you're able to kind of jump, spin, slap the grease on her face, flip over her back, and then slide a hand. And then the sleight of hand was a 14 plus 7, which is 21. As you flip over her back, you take one of the little tools that you had from earlier, pop open that plate, and land behind her with a flourish. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yay! <laughs> All right. She's open. Open for business. <laughs> All right, Amiri. All right. So Amiri is actually going to come floating into the room now, up All the right. stairs and in, just for flavor text. She's floating. Yeah, Skip and there's enough room will. for you to move past the armor that's there without getting an op attack. Perfect. And then I will shoot my Ald- Aldrich Blast. I'll shoot the first one at the one that Ominist and Tin Man were hitting, and the second one at the one behind Tin Man. Okay. The f- first one is 19. Just misses. And the second one is 24. Definitely hits. For 13 damage. Alright. The the armor blasts apart bits and pieces of it flinging across the room. So there's just one animated armor left in the room. The maker is going to use a lair action and she will cast, or actually she's going to use one of her legendary actions and cast Ray of Frost at, uh, well, it's going to be, that's going to have to be 10, man. That's the only one in front of her that she could see. So let's see if she hits. That is... 
an 18, so that does not hit, correct? With your yes. corrected armor? All right, so it zips past your ear, hits uh, something hanging from, from one of the racks behind you, and you see crystal ice form over it. Oh, a wrench on the wall for a second. Uh, Pidge. <laughs> Pidge blinks out of the ethereal plane and sees that the hatch is open. I guess I could have... I, I watched Amonist open the hatch. I say, thank you, Amonist, mm-hmm. for opening the hatch! <laughs> and I attempt to switch out the pulsating, sort of like, not a good fit power supply that's causing her to surge mm-hmm. and become red and evil and stuff with this superior power supply that we made. Stainless steel. It's better. What do I roll to see if I do that? <laughs> let it, let me, uh, let's like a sleight of hand or yeah, we'll just go with sleight of hand. So that's a good one. Roll to 17. So that's 18. All right. <laughs> You're able to grip her back with your with your legs reach in with with one hand rip out the uh heart of the maker and quickly replace it with this new battery we're trying to help you exchange (laughs) yeah she powers down for just a second and you kind of hold your breath but then she powers back up and as she powers back up the uh the light is now back to that light white soft glow rather than the angry red glow yay (laughs) we did it you guys and yes we did and she she reaches behind her and she's like kind of patting her back trying to oh and let's see if she hi (laughs) yeah so she she kind of grabs you by the back of your shirt and pulls you forward and who are you? Why are you in my home? Hello. I hold up the schematics and I say, over the past week, I've been training under you to learn your amazing construct artificing. Curious. I have no record of this. Yes. Um, there was a mild kerfluffle during the improvement that you wanted us to do for you. Check your heart. It's improved. She kind of closes her eyes and there's uh, a, a light that starts at her feet and runs up her body and then back down her body. And she opens her eyes again. Scans are complete. Everything is normal. Operations are optimal. Yes. You no longer will experience power surges because we have improved your heart. It was my thank you to you for letting me study under you. And my friends. I guess you're at... Hopefully not the exploded robots, and <laughs> instead it's the friends. You guys probably wave. <laughs> Tin Man, wave! <laughs> Hello. <laughs> she glances around and sees <sighs> the bits of the other drones. She's oh my, there must have been a malfunction. Excuse me, I have much work to do. And immediately just goes right back to inventing, with apparently no memory of the recent kerfluffle. Oh, good. (laughs) Thank you for letting us study under you. Excuse me, ma'am. May I train under you? You may for a time. Very well. Tin Man is going to stick around for a little while. Um, I will come back. (laughs) I slowly slip the Heart of the Maker into my fanny pack of material spell components. And continue to study for a week before we, I guess, head home. Yeah? Yeah, guys? Uh, I'll take that helm if you guys are going to stick around. Yeah, sure. Definitely. After I leave the room, and as you're reading a book, is it still Companions, or have you finished that one? Oh, no. I mean, me and Ominous are probably not going to stick around for another week. And yeah, here he is, so. you know, a kid that'll be two weeks away from. So she'll take the helm. And her and Ominous still probably skedaddle. I'll see you guys back at the guild. I'd like to just spend a little bit more time here learning. Agreed. All right. As uh, Miri and Ammonis exit the temple, uh, you see a tall, 
fellow with shaggy black hair leaned up against one tree, shuffling some cards, and he goes, oh my goodness, it certainly took you all long enough. Uh, <laughs> I'm assuming not everyone survived. Oh no, they will, they uh, they want to stay and study under the uh, under the maker. But I, I have right here the Helm of Awe. Or part of it. Or part of it. Yeah. Part, part one. Uh, excellent. Uh, do you hand it to him? Wait, 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 no. <laughs> I thought we were supposed to hold on to it. I No, don't do it. I think I will hold on. I think I will hold on to this for now. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no offense to you, but we're, we're kind of messing with Loki here. I'll hold on to it. He, he nods. He's like, well, if you're ready, I can take you back to the guild. Uh, yes, two of us are. The other two will be done in another week. I don't know. Is there right. an easy way to get back and forth between here and our realm? Uh, there are certainly plenty of magics. Uh, I'm just wondering how our friends are going to get home. Any wizard or sorcerer with planar travel magic should be able to uh, whip something up. So mm. somebody in the guild. Yeah. You've got you've got people. Yeah. Okay. All right. And uh, Raynard will kind of do a little flourish with his hands and snap his fingers, and you two are back in the guild hall. Just he's not there okay. with you, but there you are. You guys are staying with the the maker. Has any time passed? <laughs> yes. The you. The, there was no timey wimey stuff. You were gone the same amount of time. You were hanging out in the in the tower. Ugh, okay. All right. I have to go talk to Moxie and give her a rundown of all of this. And thus ends your adventure with the Maker. Yay! All right. Uh, joining us this time were Pidge. Bye. I made a new friend. A monist. Bye. The Tin Man and Amiri. Catch y'all next time. We hope that you enjoyed this episode of the Fire Breathing Kittens podcast. You can find more adventures on Amazon.com in the bookstore, Fire Breathing Kittens, all one word, podcast. We have official merchandise on Redbubble.com. Go to redbubble.com and search for works from your favorite characters in the store Fire Breathing K. You can get a detective's notepad with your favorite character or the Fire Breathing Kittens logo on it. Firebreathingkittenspodcast.com has links to topics that may interest you, such as a wikia with entries for different characters, a Reddit page where you can discuss the episodes with other listeners, and more.